Uh, I just disconnected and reconnected. I must okay. have had like a Wi-Fi problem because um, it just said reconnecting or whatever. I don't know. Okay, it looks good now to me. Uh... Okay, yeah. So I, I don't know when I when that went out or when it didn't. But what I was saying, I'll say it a little bit shorter this time. Was a two mana two three flash flyer would be like a B. Uh, a, a two mana one two flash flyer is like an F to a D. So I mean that line of text is really important. Uh, I don't know how much ability there is to draw two cards in a turn and throne. In Modern mm -hmm. Horizons, this card would be like a, an A, I think. This card would just be amazing. Um, but it's really dependent. So, I mean, I'll go with like a C. But uh, if you get a lot of card drawing, take this really early. If you have none, don't even play it. It's just a super high variance card. Yeah, it looks, it looks very good. Um, and would you say that this effect is easier to proc than uh, Brineborn Cutthroat from M20. So Brineborn Cutthroat is a uh, two mana, two one flash. And whenever you play a card in your opponent's turn, it gets plus one, plus one. Yeah, I mean, again, it just it just depends on the set. I mean, if there was cycling in this format, this card would be really, really, really good. Um, mm -hmm. How many ways are there to draw an extra card? I have no idea. Yep. Card looks very promising, though. Okay, next card here. Folio of Fancies. One colorless and a blue. It's an artifact rare. Players have no max hand size. Which, by the way, can we start uh, trying to get the max hand size uh, raised from the starting hand size? It doesn't need to be a lot, but it's really, really, really dumb that when you miss a land drop in limited on turn three, you get punished by also having to discard a hand, a discard to hand size. Uh, if this, if you're going to draw seven cards at the start of a game of Magic, then the max hand size should be like nine or ten, not seven. Okay, Rick. True, yeah. Come on, people. Tell Watsy. Raise the max hand size to <laughs> nine. The start, the, you draw seven at the start of the game, max hand size of nine, not seven. All right, back to the card. Players have no maximum hand size. XX tap. Each player draws X cards. Two and a color, two colorless and a blue tap. Each opponent puts a number of cards equal to the number of cards in their hand from the top of their library into their graveyard. So, a very interesting card here. So, the first ability, each player draws cards, and then the second ability allows you to mill them equal to the number of cards. They're both tap abilities, so it's so it, like you realistically you have to like make them draw at the end of their turn and try to mill them. Overall, I just don't see this being a card in limited because I think that both card both both sides are very very awkward. Um, first of all, it's hard to evaluate. I mean, obviously, since deck lists aren't public or anything, um, it's hard to evaluate like how good your opponent's deck is compared to your own. And uh, the milling aspect of it is pretty unreliable as well because, well, it's like you're spending a lot of mana and uh, they're getting stuff and technically you're losing out on tempo like you're spending mana it's hard for you to develop stuff in addition to doing this stuff uh i just don't see this as a card maybe maybe it's a little bit better than i expect but at first glance it's going to be like a d or something for me or I even agree. lower yeah i i agree with you uh i think this is not a card you're going to main deck hardly ever uh an f in most decks might be a powerful sideboard card like if your opponent is a control deck and they are just never pressuring you this does end the game pretty quickly. If you just if you're not really under pressure yep. and you just play this in the late game, it's, it doesn't have summoning sickness. It's an artifact. And to turn draw cards on tap mill, et cetera, et cetera. I think that this is a card you shouldn't put in your main, but I think this could be a powerful sideboard card. Yep, exactly. I mean, in the first week, I am going to main board this card to see just exactly how bad it is, but uh, I expect this to be like a reasonable sideboard card, a terrible main board card. Between this and Happily Ever After, you've got your work cut out for your week one. <laughs> <laughs> I love bad cards, by the way. As you know from, like, Diviner's Lockbox. <laughs> hey, if, if you didn't like bad cards, you might not have broke M20 with, with Bo, you know? Because Bo was bad yeah. in the previous format, but Bo was just awesome in M20. So, you know, trying stuff out has its merits. Exactly. In M20, I've had some decks. I believe I, I had one deck with uh, six vials in it. <laughs> uh, it, was, it was a really good time. That... That run did go, like, seven or whatever, but... All right, next card, Frogify. One colorless and a blue. Enchant creature. Enchanted creature loses all abilities and is a blue frog with base power and toughness 1-1. One, one. Okay, so this is at uncommon compared to, like, Kazmina's transportation or something at common in War of the Spark. 
uh i'm actually pretty interested to to see what you think about cards like these because for me i i almost never main board these cards because people oftentimes people are like oh well it's good at dealing with gods well you know what's better than dealing with a god just hope that they don't have one I um do, I, do, I do agree with that logic in general <laughs> so overall i just don't think that it's great most of the time being able to shrink something it's a card that i'll bring in against like a deck with that has like big green creatures and stuff like that but for the most part, if your removal is leaving a 1-1 one -one around, it's just not that fantastic unless you're a flyer deck or something. Yeah, I, I think that's a really good concept. Like, uh, one of the times I disagree with my chat the most often is when it comes to, like, they're like, oh, board in this answer for this card to beat you, and I'm just like, yeah, I'll just hope they don't draw it or I curve out or whatever. <laughs> like, that's just not how magic works. Like, you don't, yep. your opponent doesn't have their deck and the mana to cast it every game, and you don't have yours. Like, uh, you definitely, cards like this, you do not want to be main decking in general. You may board them in. You may play one of it in the main. Cards like this, if you have the ability to like loot or rummage them away, they go up in value, right? Um, like if, if you imagine a world where at the start of every turn, you just got to loot once, then a card like this that's very situational would go up in value mm -hmm. a lot because you would loot it away most of the time. But then the games you were way ahead, you could save it in case they had a god or the games they actually had a god, you could play it, right? Yep. But since you don't get to do that, uh, I don't like to main deck cards like this either. I would give this card like a D in the dark. Like it's borderline playable. I'm not super happy about main decking stuff like Fragapai in general. Yep, exactly. It's going to be a D for me as well. And, it, you know, honestly, that would be a very interesting second discussion for the Benzie podcast in 2021. So, I mean, maybe we're just we'll, going to have to start a limited strategy podcast or something. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, because, like, there's a lot of these concepts that. I see very, very often, right, where people are like, oh, well, it hits so many things. Like, yes, but then it also doesn't hit so many things as well. So it's like, where do you draw that line? Like, how important do the cards in your main deck have to be to always do something, you know, like to, to always do a good thing? Um, but yeah, okay. That's I'm, for another day I'm, here. I'm with you. I think about it the same way. How does the card perform 90% of the time is a lot more important than the corner cases. All right, next, next, uh, next All right. card. Gadwick yeah. the Wizened. Uh, blue, 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 X. Legendary creature, human wizard, 3-3. Three, three. When Gadwick enters the battlefield, draw X cards. Whenever you cast a blue spell, tap target non-land permanent in opponent controls. Oh my goodness. Do doesn't this card seem obnoxious? It's obviously expensive, but like, think about the different uh, price points, right? Like four mana... 3-3 three, three Hill Giant, where you draw one card. Seems good to me. Five mana, draw two cards. Like, it scales very well with the game. Even on turn three, I mean, uh, assuming that you can cast it on three, which is not going to be very often, but if you can cast it on three, it's fine. Um, and then it also has an ability on top of that. Whenever you cast something, a, a blue thing, you can tap one of their things. It, like, this card seems very good to me. I'm not sure if it's an... Like, I find it hard to say that it's an S because of the restrictive mana cost, but it's like a very high A... I agree. Uh, this is like a low S, high A. It might, it might be an S. Um, because the yeah, it might is, be an S. This is not a card you have to put in play on turn three. Like, the later yeah. in the game, like, let's say you only have one or two blue on turn three and you're just doing your normal stuff. That's fine. And then suddenly, when you have seven mana and you have your third blue, you play this and win the game. Um, so, I mean, this is a card that you don't mind the blue, blue, blue casting cost as much because you're sure. not, you, ideally, you're not casting this until you have six or seven um, mana in play a lot of the time anyway. And then people were saying, like, you're supposed to be able to draft mono in this format sometimes. And if you draft mono and you play this on turn three, the second line attacks, whenever you cast a blue spell, tap target uh, permanent they have, well, you're mono blue, every spell you have is blue. So, I mean, you're yeah, so they can never block, right? And if you cast instance on oh. their turn, you tap their creatures on their turn. So, like, but if even if you're a normal, on, like, that white card, even if you're a normal two-color deck, this is a card that you want to play on turn six, not on turn three, so blue, blue, blue doesn't matter that much. If you have nine islands and eight mountains and you play this card on turn six, you draw three cards, refuel, get a three, three, and then you have the ability if, if you don't have to trade it off. So I think this card is at least an A and it might be an S. Should we just go out on a limb and just give this the honorary S here? Man, this card seems busted. I mean, I mean, this is a card <laughs> I'm definitely happy to first pick. Just yeah. we whether or not it's more like A tier or S tier, I don't know. I think this is like a low, a high A, low S. I mean, I agree with what you said. Yeah, I mean, I'm thinking about me opening this pack one, pick one, and I'm like, all right, <laughs> get in my deck, Gadwick. 
All right. Okay. Yeah, let's go and give his honorary ass. Oh, screw it. All right. Next card here, Hypnotic Sprite. Hypnotic Sprite. Blue, blue, 2-1 flying. It also has adventure. Uh, I can't make out the adventure name at the moment. Mesmeric mm -hmm. Glare. Yeah. Um, I guess I was mesmerized by Glare because I couldn't read it. <laughs> Two colorless and a blue. Instant. Counter target spell with converted mana cost three or less. Wow. Like, this is a really cool design. Again, you do want to be, like, mainly blue for it. This is another card that's going to be interesting because, well, do you just play this two mana, two, one flyer on turn two? Or do you want to wait and uh, counter something with three or less? Like, I think for the most part, unless your opponent played a two drop and your hand's very good, I think you're just going to wait. I think this card just reeks uh, value. Like, I don't know. Like, this card seems fantastic to me. Like, right now I'm thinking it's something like an A. I agree. It's a good card, no question. Um, definitely a B to an A. Um... It is blue blue, so you're not gonna always have blue blue on turn two to play your two one flyer. But like you said, you don't necessarily For want sure. to, because uh, I mean it is just a great two for one if you just pass on turn three, counter something, and then you play your two one after that. So you don't really want to play your two one on turn two that often. Um, so yeah, I could see low A, high B, um, tough to evaluate adventure, but uh, this does give you a two for one. Uh, plenty of spells in most limited decks cost three or less mana. So uh, yeah, the scales yeah. reasonably well. This definitely seems like a it's first fine. pickable. Yeah, this definitely seems like a first pickable card to me. Whether it's more of a high B, low A kind of a card, yep. somewhere in that range. Exactly. Again, fantastic design. That's that's a really cool card. Uh, into the story, five colorless, blue, blue. Don't worry though, this card doesn't actually cost seven. This card. <laughs> This spell costs three less to cast if an opponent has seven or more cards in their graveyard. Draw four cards. Oh, Ben, can you hear me still? Yeah. Can you not hear me? Oh, okay. It's working now. Okay. Okay. So, uh, yeah. And it also draws four cards here. Okay. Hmm. Into the story. I mean, I... For one, love over cost of draw spells. Like, honestly, even if the opponent doesn't have seven or more cards in their graveyard, and this is just straight up cost seven, it is instant speed, which kind of mitigates that a little bit, I suppose. But uh, I mean, it, this is going to be better with like the with like the new thought collapse and stuff like that. This is a card that I don't know if I'm going to pick that highly, but I think this card is really really cool. Um, I am going to be playing a lot of this, uh, at least in the beginning. Hopefully the format's not too fast, and uh, which I don't really expect it's going to be because people want to get value out of their adventure cards, right? So I think that this format, so far, I expect it to be like more value-based. Um, obviously, there seems like to be aggressive archetypes, but it seems like you're going to want to be able to ha just have more resources than your opponent, like in a tr as in a traditional uh, limited format. Um, I think I'm going to go to give this something like a B. I think this card's really cool. I mean, you can't have that many of them. I'm not going to lie. I don't know if you have more than one, but... Yeah. What do you think here? Uh, so one thing I'll say about mechanics like this, not that they come up often, but when they do, uh, they tend to play pretty well, because in the games where you're a little flooded, you're not going to trade off resources that much, and then you'll just cast this for seven. In the games where you're stuck on, like, four mana, then you might have put seven cards in your opponent's graveyard, because you just cast spells constantly right when you're stuck on four or five mana you're just you have tons of spells to play so a lot of ability to trade off resources that said um you don't want to have multiple cards that don't impact the board in your hand pretty much ever in limited mm -hmm. uh limited revolves around the board so yeah i'm kind of with like a c probably more than a b mm -hmm. um but it depends on how slow the format is how much cheap removal cheap removal plays well with card drawing um how easy it is to put cards in your opponent's graveyard like we saw that counter spell that mills three so i'm gonna go with more of like a high c but it could, it could easily be a b it, it's, it is very format dependent yeah uh a, a few things i want to mention about a card like this if there's something like a wall of lost thoughts i think this card just like goes up in value a lot um and in addition to that is that that's that's one of the weaknesses of like a rating scale because the power level of this card is very high but the thing is that, well, how many do you want? And and how good is it going to be on average kind of thing? Like, the ceiling's very high on it, but it's like a card that e even if it's very, very good, you can't really play more than one or two of these. 
So it's uh, kind of hard to evaluate on the traditional scale of just how good a card is. Oh, I definitely agree. Part of why I don't normally do ratings is because Magic, especially limited, is just so dynamic. Like cards values are always changing depending on what you what the rest of the cards in your decks are. So, you know, this is just like I said, this is a basic guideline that you should deviate from a lot, depending on what your deck needs. This is this is something you can take into the pre-release, but this is not meant to be an accurate assessment of the card in every deck, not by any stretch. Yep, exactly. And people are trying uh, and like people are comparing it to prying eyes. And as much as I love casting prying eyes, I think it's one of the worst things to do it, like when evaluating or even approaching a limited format is I think like just direct comparison cards like without taking it into account like the uh the uh the, the uh yeah like the format and its relative uh, power level and how that plays out because cards that are good in one format can be bad in another format but uh oh, yeah. we'll see how this is We'll see how this is. Prying Eyes was good in that deck because you're drafting Clear of the Mind. You're drafting some ultimate control deck yeah. that needs a win yeah. condition. If you're trying to win with the creatures you have in play, then Prying Eyes is not a playable card. If you're trying, if your whole deck is instants and all you're trying to do is kill things and counter things and stay alive, then Prying Eyes can be a good instant win condition. Yep, exactly. But cool story. And uh, that's my favorite art of the format so far into the story. Man. Okay. All right. The Next magic, card here. The Magic Mirror. This is a legendary artifact. It's mythic. Six colorless and three blue. The spell costs one less to cast for each instant and sorcery in your graveyard. You have no max hand size. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a knowledge counter on it. Then draw a card for each knowledge counter on it. <laughs> well, Wizards is listening to you with the uh, no maximum hand size. They're printing it, <laughs> on, they're printing it on a lot of cards now. Kappa. Um... So this is an expensive card. It's supposed to, like, you're supposed to be able to quote unquote ramp it out, you know, essentially by casting cards, of inst casting instances of sorceries. I assume that there's cards that cycle themselves, but realistically, this card is so expensive and it's slow as well. Cause on your upkeep, you put a counter and then you draw a card and then maybe, I don't know, depending on your deck, especially if your deck can't finish out a game, which is kind of like what the style of deck I would assume that this goes in, like decks that can't really finish out a game properly, uh, you pro you're probably going to mill yourself out. So, like, I love this card. Again, I'm going to play a lot of it. It just doesn't seem fantastic to me. It seems like it's going to be something like a D for me. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree. I might even go an F. Um, this card is going to be interesting to try and build around and construct it, but I'm not sure, even if you cast this, I'm not sure if it's going to deck you or win you the game. And uh, nine mana is infinite. If you have two instants or sorceries, you don't get to play this until turn seven. Um, I think this card is probably an F in most limited decks. Maybe a, it's a sideboard card. I don't think this is a card you want to play in limited. Uh, All right, Ben. Very many decks. All right, Ben. Another hot take here. Another card or effect that I believe should be evergreen in limited formats. Clear the mind. This th would this card be playable with clear the mind in the format? I mean, it might be a win condition for a clear of the mind deck. I mean, you, you're not going to be able to deck yourself. It would win the game. But then again, you know, those decks, do they, do they even need this, right? Like, you're not really... No, probably not. You'd rather just have a prying eyes, right? Like, I don't even... So, like, I mean, into the story kind of thing. Like, yeah, that seems way better than this card as well. I think right? this, like card, this card... This card is interesting mm -hmm. for Constructed, where your whole deck can be cheap instants and sorceries, and you can just... And you play for three mana or something. Right, but for limited, I think this is an F. I don't think this is going in draft decks. Yeah, I don't think so either. A cool card, though. Love it. Okay. Mantle of Tides. One blue mana to cast. It's an artifact. It's an equipment. Equipped creature gets plus one, plus two. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, attach Mantle of Tides to target creature you control, so you don't have to pay the equip cost if you draw two cards in one turn. Equip three. Hmm. I can see this card being extremely obnoxious. Like, you're just going in for attacks, and, and you can basically cheat by playing, by, by cantripping, and just moving this around and things. That being said, is the... I don't know, like, the upside of this card is not that high, and... Blue so far doesn't seem to be that much of an aggressive color to me. I've seen a lot of fairies and stuff, but overall, I don't I don't think this card's going to be fantastic. Maybe in the right deck it's going to be annoying, but I don't think it's going to be more anything more than annoying. I don't think it's going to be good. So for me, it'll be like a C, maybe even lower than that. 
Yeah, it feels like a D to me. It feels like a card you don't even want to put in a lot of your decks, but yeah. it is a cheap artifact. Like, if you have that one adventure that you put, you can uh, turn an artifact into a 4-4, four, four. this is a card yep, you can put on turn one, and then on turn three, you can make a 4-4 four, four haste, right? So I think this is a card that should find its way into a few of your decks, but not a card you're going to want to main all the time. So I'm going to go with a D. Yeah, I think D is pretty accurate. It's uh, just very low impact. Um, a lot of formats, like something unusual, a lot of times you want your cards to be like good at most points of the game, and this is not that. Okay, next card here. Mirrorfolk Se Secret Keeper. One blue, oh four, but it has an adventure. Venture Deeper, Sorcery for a blue. Target player puts the top four cards of their library into their graveyard. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, well, I did ask for a Wall of Lost Thoughts, and I guess this is Wall of Lost Thoughts at common? So, I mean, I don't know. Like, with, I mean, if you have Into the Story, this card's probably very, very playable, and. This card's blanking a lot of knights and stuff as well. I don't know. Like normally, I would. I, I I think normally a card like this is like, like a low C or something. But what if this is just a sleeper card? What do you think, Ben? I mean, we can't. This, I'll take the rain check, even though it's <laughs> you're evaluating first here. I mean, uh, look, mill is either a deck or it's not, right? Uh -huh. If milling the opponent has no value, then this is not a playable card. If milling the, if you're trying to mill them out, this is a great card, right? Mill decks want to block. They don't want to attack. Uh, two mana, Wall of Lost Thoughts. Two mana, 0-4, oh, um, mill four cards when it comes into play. That's a great card in a mill deck and an unplayable card in an aggressive blue deck. Or even, uh, like, even if you're a defensive deck, if mill four doesn't matter, then a two mana, 0-4 oh, is not a good wall, right? That's so, true. So, like, if mill is real, this is a good card in mill. If mill is not real, don't put this card in your deck. Hmm. Cool card though. I I love it. I, I I don't know why. Like they just slap an adventure on a wall of lost thoughts and it looks just so much cooler. But uh, yeah, I think um, I think something like a C, C minus D, somewhere around that sphere is probably where it's gonna be. But you know, yeah, I mean, maybe there's synergies. We'll for a, for a mill deck, it's a B to a C. For a non mill deck, mm. it's an F. I don't know. E, so even if you have like one into the story kind of thing. Um, which one is into the story? I'm bad with names. Uh, it's it's this card here that uh, it costs three less if a opponent has uh, seven or more cards in the graveyard. So instead of costing seven, it costs uh, four instead yeah, to I draw mean, four cards. No, that's a, that's a good point. Uh, if you draft a control deck where you're not trying to mill them out, but you have into the story to draw cards and you have uh, that as an 0-4 to block with, yeah, th th it's playable in that deck. Yeah. Um, so yeah, okay. maybe more of a C, maybe uh, some, somewhere in the DC range, just depending on the mm. format. But but in mill, this is a card that you would take pretty early and you would never cut. Like yep. so, so if you're playing mill, it's more like a C plus to a B. But if you're playing a normal control deck with like um, like you said into the story and stuff, then it's probably like a solid C. And if you're just a random blue deck that maybe is a little more defensive, but you don't have synergy around milling them, then it's like it's probably a, like a D or F. Then it's yeah. like a D. And if you're an aggressive blue deck, it's a total F. I definitely agree with that. All right, cool, cool, cool cards though. Like I'm getting excited about Wall of Lost Thoughts and stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean I enjoyed yeah. that deck and that archetype too. And but I mean that format not only had Clear the Mind, it also had High Alert, which is a lot of the mm -hmm. why Wall of Lost Thoughts was good. That's true. Midnight Clock, two colorless and a blue artifact. Tap to add a blue mana. Two colorless and a blue. Put an hour counter on it. At the beginning of each upkeep, put an hour counter on it. Whenever the 12th hour counter is put on Midnight Clock, shuffle your hand and graveyard into your library, then draw seven cards. Exile it. Huh, okay, so when it has 12 counters on it, shuffle your hand and graveyard into your library. Huh, so it's basically clear the mind and then you draw seven cards and then you exile this. Wow, that's really cool. Um. It is slow though, so at first glance, it's a three mana mana stone. Like, uh, you know, just add one mana, which, which uh, if if you have five drops and stuff like that, it goes up in value significantly. And then uh, not not only does it get counters on its own, but you can accelerate it by spending spare mana for three mana. You can put counters on it, and that's not a tap ability either. Um, I assume most of the time you're not going to do that, uh, unless unless it's really late in the game. 
I don't know. This card's really cool. Like, like this card might be busted. I don't know. A B? An A? I mean, I find it hard to believe it's going to be an A, but I feel like it's going to be at least a B. Yeah, it's tough to evaluate a card like this, but I'm with you. I, I would give this a B. Uh, it's a mana rock that wins you the game, basically, when it goes off. Yep. And uh, you get a counter every turn for free, but so yep. you're, you're not going to spend... Uh, you're never going to pay three and put counters on it. Unless... No, you, no, you get a counter on each upkeep. Oh, on each upkeep. Oh, wow. Uh -huh. so, so you get two counters a turn for free. Oh, so this thing's uh -huh. going to go off pretty quickly. Uh, th yeah, no, this is a good card. This might even be more like an A than a B. I thought you got a counter on your upkeep. Uh, it's not yeah. symmetrical. It's just you that shuffle your hand graveyard and then get seven new cards, right? I I think let's just go with an A. Like, this card is so sweet. <laughs> yeah, no, I think this is more like an A than a B then. Because, I mean, yeah. look, you play this card, you use it for mana and cast spells from your hand, right? And then it gets two counters a turn. Then you're out of cards in your hand, right? Because you got a mana ramp. <laughs> Then you're just like, okay, I'll pay six and put two more counters on it. Now it triggers. I get seven new cards. My opponent doesn't. I probably win. I just got seven new cards. I mean, sometimes it'll be too slow. Definitely not an S. But I could see this being more yep. of an A than a B. I mean, this is a card that is adding a lot of value. If it didn't have tap to add a blue, it would be a lot worse. But the fact yep. that you can slap this down on turn three, fall a little bit behind, but start getting counters right away then catch back up because you have an extra mana to work with each turn now i'm gonna give this card an a i think this is yep. actually i think they actually designed a good card like this when most of these kind of designs fail i think they may have succeeded here but this is a tough card to evaluate so you know i'm definitely open to being wrong but i'm gonna go ahead and give this an a uh, i think that they really designed this card well and it's gonna be um it's gonna be a game-winning three drop yeah, so two things for me, as uh, Ryan Saxon chat said, it, you know, like you just kind of assume these effects to be symmetrical because they usually are. You know, it's like some sort of like garbage EDH card that, you know, that like Frank, that Frank's trying to build his like, uh, you know, take infinite turns EDH deck kind of thing. And um, since it's not symmetrical, I think it goes with value a lot. And secondly, I think that it, fits the design space of what we're talking about where cards that can be used for like like cards that can be used in multiple ways it adds mana and it also has a game winning effect i think that's very very cool i love the design of it this is a okay, review next. for limited super 90 hmm. we le we leave constructed to the constructed pros this is a this is a limited only review <laughs> All right, next card, Mirror Maid, one colorless blue blue. You may have Mirror Maid enter the battlefield as a copy of any artifact or enchantment on the battlefield, and it's an enchantment. Huh, okay, so it does not enter as a creature. So, man, this card is going to be hard to make uh, make good. Either it's good in your deck or you don't play it. So, it's again, this is a card that kind of doesn't really fit the, the uh, evaluation space, but I think in general it's going to be like a D for me something like that i agree with you uh it's gonna be an f in most decks but some decks are gonna be pretty happy about it um, it's like either a b or a d it, it, it's like either a b or d or an f kind of thing yeah more like it's either a b or an f i think but that sure, might yeah, that yeah. might make it a d i mean like you said this doesn't fit the rating scale well uh there's gonna be some decks that really want this but in most decks you're not gonna play this card yeah hmm. cool card though Misford River Turtle, three colorless and a blue, one five. When River Turtle attacks, another target attacking non-human creature can't be blocked this turn. Huh. Okay, so this thing, the only aspect of it attacking well is that it has a big butt. So it's a one five. Like they would probably have to block multiple things. This thing is pretty obnoxious. Uh, if you have two of these, I guess they're both unblockable. But at at that point, like that rate is very, very terrible. I, in, in my opinion, um, I have no idea what you're supposed to do with this card. I think you're supposed to play it as a, just a four mana one five, and then sometimes it sneaks in lethal. So, do you have a rating or? Uh, I don't know, like a D. I think um, so. The thing about a card like this is when you're a defensive deck, like mm -hmm. you play this card, it's a good blocker, and then it's also a win condition. Now, you don't generally need win conditions in your defensive decks against aggro decks, 
But sometimes when you play like control mirrors, defensive deck mirrors, a card like this can be really scary for the opponent, That's right? True. If you're an aggro deck, you don't want to play a four mana one five. Uh, the ability to give your creature unblockable is nice, but you still paid four mana and put one power in play, right? So this is a card that I think is like good if your opponent is if you're a, if you're a defensive deck. This is a fine blocker, and then it can win you the game. So, like, I kind of like it. If you're an aggro deck, it might be good against other aggro decks as, like, a blocker if they're trying to attack you on the ground. But you don't really want this against a control deck, even though that looks like where the ability would shine because it's, like, mm -hmm. it's a 4 mana 1-5. So, it's, it, it's a tough card to evaluate for sure. I think I like it in my defensive decks because it's a good blocker against aggro decks, but it's also very threatening against control decks. So it's good either way. So I think I like this a lot in my defensive decks. And then it's like mm -hmm. a sideboard card for if you're an aggressive deck. Um, I would hmm. give, So I would give it like a C. I think like if you're a defensive deck, okay. which it seems like blue is mostly defensive in this <clears> format, then I think I like this card. Now it's not an early pick, of course. It's a format of 1-5. But I, I think this is like a C. I think this is a good card for a, for a defensive deck, but nothing special. For an aggro deck, it might be like a sideboard card, something like that. Hmm. I see that there's a lot of people on both of our channels who are trying to rate this highly. Sad day for all the Mako Tsunami fans out there. Yeah, they're just rating it highly because it's a turtle. They're not even thinking yeah. about what it's doing. <laughs> Turtles are pretty sweet, yeah. Okay, so somewhere in the C or D sphere. I think I'm going to give it a D. Ben's giving a C. We'll see how that card plays out. Listen, I was a kid in the 90s, too. I'm a Ninja Turtle fan also, okay? But that, does, <laughs> that, doesn't, that doesn't make it a good draft card in 2019. <laughs> no, but I, I do think it's a good uh, card. Like, I think, it, I think it's a very... I, I don't think you're going to cut that from defensive blue decks. Like, I think that's a solid playable, nothing special, but I think that's a C for most defensive blue decks. That would have been so cool if this turtle, like, you could sacrifice a food to give it, like, an attack bonus or something. Like, you sacrifice a pizza. Give the Ninja Turtle a attack bonus. Yeah, we haven't seen any cards like that yet. Uh, are there? There's got to be cards in the set that like sack a food token to do something, right? Yeah, I mean, otherwise, what's the point of the food tokens, right? <laughs> okay, so Moonlit Scavengers, five colorless and a blue, four five. When Moonlit Scavengers enters the battlefield, if you control an artifact or an enchantment, return target creature in opponent controls to its owner's hand. Enters battlefield. Wait, uh, wait. Enters battlefield. If you control artifact, enchantment, return target creature in opponent controls. What? This is a giant mana war. If you have an artifact or enchantment, well, I kind of like that. I mean, that's I mean, that's kind of what I'm into, you know. Like, I love bouncing their stuff, and it's a reasonable size body as well. Man, like it's it, it is expensive, so I don't want to like like it's hard to play a lot of these, but like like power level wise, I feel like it's a B, and then but probably since it's six mana, like maybe we can't rate it higher than a C. Yeah, I like that. I'd give this a solid C. Uh, you, yeah. you're, you can't take them too early and play too many of them because it costs six, but this is a fine effect for six mana. So solid scene, yeah. in my opinion. Like, like very, very solid. Like, I, I think the stat line's perfect. You know, six mana, four or five, it's good. has a powerful effect. It's very, very annoying. Um, like, blue... I mean, generally, blue decks don't get beefy things like this, so it's... I don't know. This might this like this might even be your finisher. <laughs> like you're a six man of, of four or five. So, hey, I like it. I like it. Mystical dispute. Two colorless and a blue. The spell costs two less to cast if it targets a blue spell. Counter target spell unless its controller pays three. Hmm. So this is obviously supposed to be mainly a sideboard card um three mana for like a battle for like a worse convolute i guess to pay three like this is a card that you kind of have to respect in limited sometimes but at the same time this is the card that i'm probably not going to be main boarding in most of my decks it doesn't scale well with the game uh even against blue decks like sure you get like a spell pier like a uh, universal spell pierce i guess if uh if you're ta if you're countering a blue spell, but again, it doesn't scale well with the game. For me, this is going to be like a D for me at first glance. How how does this card do in a, in the late game? I don't feel like it's that good, right? I it's, mean, it's like you obviously mulligan. can't. If they get yeah, three, like, yeah, right? Once they have seven, eight, once they have seven, eight lands in play, this is a dead card, right? Yeah, it's a dead card, and and even if they're a two color deck like if half of their deck is blue it doesn't hit half of the cards so it's like close 
maybe it was even close to an F for, I mean, I, I mean, again, it's only a sideboard card. Like, I would never put this on my main board. Um, yeah, I like so... it. I like a D. Um, it's a sideboard card. Um, you know, if you have a lot of ways to rummage or loot, you could maybe main situational stuff more often. And people are sure. saying there's a lot more of that in the set than normal. But I, I'll give it a D. I agree. Yeah. Um, dead in the late game. <clears throat> not that exciting in the early game. It is exciting against blue decks. It is a very tempo positive play if your opponent's heavy blue when you can cast this for one mana on turn three or four. Because then you can just cast your spell and then leave one up and, you know, counter their turn. Uh, Against non-blue decks, not an exciting card at all. So uh, I'll give it a D. uh, But I don't like like cards that are dead in the late game. Unless unless you can lose them. I will say that I will say that I can already foresee myself raging... (laughs) <laughs> very strongly against this card just like a random main board mystical dispute out of nowhere <laughs> opt how do you rate opt one blue scry one opt. draw card <laughs> so uh when was the last time we saw opt was that dominaria or was that the only time well it wasn't the only time i don't think i think it was in like ixalan or something maybe um oh yeah it was also in ixalan wait was it i think so we've seen opt multiple times for I, i'm mm-hmm. pretty sure um I don't, I don't know uh, exactly where and how many times. Um, yeah, chat. Yeah, chat. Chat has a point here that it, it, it activates like the second spell um, mechanic. But in general, uh, so this is actually something that I learned from Ryan Sachs here in chat is that Opt is a card that's always an easy cut. You know what I mean? But I always feel like it's a cop out because Opt is like fine in the early to mid game and like very good in the late game. Just like being able to search for things. Opt has become a card that, like, I just tried to not cut from my limited decks. Um, that being said, it's not a high pick or anything, I would, but I, I would happily give this a C. Yeah, I think a C is pretty solid for Opt. Um, it's tricky with cards like this because it feels like the effect is definitely worth what you pay for it, so then why are you cutting it? Yep. Well, you want the cards in your deck to do things, so I mean, like... <laughs> This okay. card, this card, if it's finding your bombs, like if it's making your deck smaller, right? Because you see, you see two cards for only one mana because of the scry one and then draw a card. So if you have an opt in your deck, and it's almost like you have like a thirty nine or thirty eight and a half card deck. I don't know how to properly evaluate that, but uh, so if your deck wants that by a lot because you have like two incredible bombs and you just want to draw those more often, then opt goes up. Um, so I mean. And like you said, there are there is the uh, draw two cards in one turn synergy. And if you put a single counter on that one two, it's not plus one plus one until end of turn. It just gets plus one plus one. So now you've created a two three flyer for very little mm-hmm. cost. So I think with no synergy, opt is a fine cut. Sometimes you play it, sometimes you don't, depending on how, like if you have bombs and stuff like that. With synergy, you're going to play it every time. So I think a solid C. I agree. Yeah, I mean, I, I, yet again, another topic for our podcast, but it's interesting to think about because, like, the reason why we run 40 cards always and not 41 or not 42 as much as chat wants is just because, well, the smaller size deck you have, the more, like, the more frequently you can draw your good stuff. So, obviously, this does have a cost to it. It is one mana. It's not free. But, like, if you can always do that, how correct is it to just play all the ops you can? kind of thing you know what i mean Mm -hmm. oh yeah if you have like two or three cards that have that want op synergy you're playing every opt you can get you know like let's just pretend let's just pretend you had three copies of that two mana one two flash flying that gets plus one plus one a plus one plus one counter whenever you um draw two cards in one turn (laughs) if you had three copies of that card you're playing eight ops if you can get them so it, it doesn't take much for op to become a good card but on its own, it's kind of like solid filler. And then if you're digging the bombs or if you've got synergies, it becomes a pretty efficient, pretty good card. Yeah, exactly. And uh, another interesting thing about limited is that even even if opt, okay, so for argument's sake, even if opt is a card that always makes your deck, you still can't really pick it highly because you just need to pick better cards over opt kind of thing. Like you'll pick ops on the wheel and stuff like that. Um, I think it's hard to pick it highly. So. It's almost like a, it's almost like the duality of Opt, where it's a card that it's 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 very good, and even if you think that it's a card that always makes your deck, you can't pick it highly. It's kind of a weird, uh, kind of a weird paradox almost. So I know we got two different chats at once, so I'm trying not to do this too much, but uh, 
Gamer01 points out, we, Benes' chat, never suggest 41 cards. So I, I, <laughs> so I think what we figured out here is that my chat is a lot less fun than your chat. I so I I think the problem with my chat is that usually I'm the one that's trolling and then the chat has to, and then the chat's worried for me you know what I mean where usually it's the other way around on Twitch, um like yeah. the other day I play or uh, last month I played a deck with a six inspired charges and M twenty <laughs> oh sorry a six inspired charges and a one overrun, and uh, chat was very upset about that. <laughs> my, my chat knows if they suggested playing forty one cards, I would just like immediately be like, no, definitely not. Next question. Like we would, we wouldn't even talk about it. I would just be like, no. <laughs> Why would I want to have more cards? Can I have less? I'll play thirty eight if that's legal. Yeah, it it, it it's actually pretty funny. Uh, yesterday, there were a lot of new people in my stream because uh, Caleb D hosted me, and uh, we were talking about and I was talking about how um, how like dictionaries are just a social construct and how like you know like words the way we pronounce things and say things are not really real and we shouldn't trust dictionaries and people didn't know that we were trolling. But anyways, yeah, like my chat is definitely my, you know, my channel is one of those channels. So. Oh, we were trolling. I thought diction dictionaries are real. What? <laughs> Overwhelmed apprentice, one blue mana, uh, <laughs> one, two creature. When overwhelmed apprentice enters the battlefield, each opponent puts the top two cards of their library into their graveyard. Then scry two. Okay. So you also get a scry two on top of that. Hmm, interesting. So it's like a uh, omen speaker was a was a two mana one three right, and then you get a scry two. This one also has so for the cost of one mana and one toughness, you get to mill your opponent for two, and you scry two. Like oh man, the thing about one mana one twos is that they don't really do much. Um, maybe if maybe there's a bunch of X ones in the format, it's fine, but it's still not anything special. But uh, like with cards like Into the Story and things like that, I think that I could potentially get baited into running some of these. Um, the Scry like Scry Two is powerful, but it's at the cost of like a one mana one two. So I actually don't know. At first glance, I would kind of rate this like a low C or a D even. What do yeah. you think, Ben? No, I, I agree with that rating. I mean, again, this is just going to depend on how real mill is. I mean, if you're drafting a mill deck, this is like a B. I mean, if, if it's mill two, you dig to, you dig past your lands, you dig to your next card, you get a little block or whatever. Maybe you can bounce it uh, if you're mill. But if you're not dedicated mill, I mean, scry two, sure, that's going to get you past a dead land uh, or help you find lands. But it's still, you know, just a one mana one two that you're putting in your deck. So, I mean, I, I like a C. Um, I think I like a C more than a D. Uh, but if you're not, I could definitely see some decks that wouldn't play this. So maybe it is a D. And then if you're a mill deck, maybe it goes up to a, like a B. I mean, this could, this mm -hmm. could never be an A. It's not that powerful. Yeah. Um, but if you're a dedicated mill deck, then this is a card you want to take, take early. If you're a blue controlish deck, probably like a C, C minus. I'm with you. I agree. Like generally in limited, the I'm more willing to play bad cards, and I would argue that this is a bad card. Like not that it doesn't do a lot, but it's just it's very unimpactful, right? Um, but I'm more willing to play quote unquote bad cards if I have a lot of card draw and stuff like that. So like if I don't like if I have a lot of value already, I'm fine just like playing a card like this, but. Without that, I think it's going to be very hard for me to rationalize putting this in my magic deck. Yeah, I, I'm with you. C, C, C minus, D plus, whatever. Somewhere in that range. I'm definitely with you. Okay. Queen. Ooh, what is this? This is Queen of Ice. Two colorless and a blue. It's a creature with adventure. Um, the, the adventure, Rage of Winter... You pay a colorless and a blue, tap target creature. It doesn't on tap during its controller's next on tap step, and it's a sorcery. And then the creature is whenever Queen of Ice deals combat damage to a creature, tap that creature. It doesn't on tap during its controller's next on tap step, and it's a 2 3. What? Okay, not only is a human noble wizard, and I'm a huge fan of Frozen, the movie. Um,. And this has two different parts to it. It is a sorcery speed thing, uh, which I think is balanced for a common. Um, if it was an instant speed, it would have to be uncommon at least, because that's very obnoxious. Because if it's an because if it's instant speed, you essentially tap on their turn and it stays tap for two turns. 
I, I, I love this card. Like, I think this card is super sweet. Um, I don't know how good it is because it's not like an enter. The sorry, the the normal creature side isn't an enter play effect, but this card seems super sweet to me. I love this card. Um, I want to give this a B. I mean, it is sweet. I think I'm going to disagree on this one. Uh, I'm, I'm going to give this one a C. Mm -hmm. um, a 3 mana 2 3 with that ability is just not that powerful. Like, it's cool that it can lock down yes, a big creature for one power. turn. But, like, I mean, if you're chumping a big creature or they're blocking a big creature, you're locking down their creature for one turn, but your creature's still <laughs> in the graveyard, right? And, like, blue doesn't seem that aggressive. Tap target creature, it doesn't untap uh, per turn, is a lot better out of aggro decks than it is out of control decks. At, so, I mean, I'm going to give this a C. I think it's a playable. I think you're very rarely going to cut it. But I'm not I'm not looking to take this card, like, first, second, third pick of a draft. This is, like, a solid fourth through sixth pick. And that C, it's going to mm -hmm. make my deck, but it's not exciting range to me. Yeah, the interesting thing about these tap effects as well is, like, uh, one good example I have is from Ravnica Allegiance, where if you compare Arrestor's Admonition to a card like Code of Constraint, even though, like, they kind of do similar things, uh, one makes them have to reuse their mana to play that thing again. So, like, tapping somebody down, freezing something is generally not that good because, yes, you get some damage and maybe you, like, get a leverage aboard a little bit. If you're not killing them, it that value is, uh, I don't know, the, like, it's, it's just not worth as much as it looks. Yeah, it's but, got um... some small upsides. Like, you know, like, if your opponent's aggro, you play this, you block, they use a pump spell, their creature stays tapped for a turn. Yep. But, mm -hmm. I mean, like, as a whole, it's still a 3-mana 2-3. That's most of what the card does. So, like I said, I think it's a playable, oh, but I don't think it's very exciting. Like, it's it's a cool design, but I, I, see, I think this is just a C. I, I, I wouldn't want to take this card early. Like, I don't think this is a B. I gotta disagree. Oh, man. Whew. The art is fantastic. I love this card, though. Hmm. Okay. A lot of flavor in the set is just so good. Love it so far. All right, run away together. One colorless and a blue. Choose two target creatures controlled by different players. Return those creatures to their owner's hand. Instant. <laughs> I love, I love the flavor of this card. So choose two target creatures controlled by different players. So you pick your own thing, you pick their thing. Mm -hmm. And you return the creatures to their owner's hand. So like, their thing is an enemy, right? And then your, obviously your thing is on your side on your team but then they run away together they live happily ever after i think this card is so sweet i actually think that the power level of this card is relatively high as well um i think that this is a card that you cannot play like more than one basically of but i do think that it's a sweet card uh whereas normally i would give this like give this like a d or something i think that this is like a c i think this card is pretty sweet yeah, I agree, and it's because of the format. Uh, I mean, <clears throat> clearly they made this card because of adventure. Uh, you know, you you have your creature in play. If you bounce theirs and your creature that has adventure, then you get to send it on an adventure again, right? Yeah. So uh, in this format, I think this is a C, maybe even like a C plus. I agree, it's a yeah, C. I'm not going to give it maybe a B. Maybe even a B. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to give it a B. I think if a B is a card basically that's above average that you're ha that you're yep. fine with first picking or whatever. Not quite a first pick, but sometimes you first pick and sometimes it's second or third. Like it should be. Yeah. Like, the way I've been using your rating scale is, like, S is broken, <clears throat> A is first pick, B is, like, second, third pick, uh, C is, like, fourth through sixth pick, D is, yep. like, seventh, you know, through tenth, eleventh pick, and then, you know, F is unplayable. So, sure. uh, you know, I, I wouldn't, I would never want to first pick this, uh, so I wouldn't give it an A. A B, I mean, I think you will second or third pick this sometimes because it's just a weak pack. But I don't think you're going to be happy when you're blue and you take this with your second pick or your third pick. I so I, so I would give it like a C C plus. Yep, I definitely agree with that. I think this is one of those cards where even if it's good in your deck, like you're just not allowed to pick it if there's anything better. Uh, you're gonna try to wheel it, and if you don't wheel it, you're probably still not gonna miss it. I don't think, but um, but it's I very do powerful. Think, yeah, yeah, I think it's a solid playable. I think you could, if you have adventure creatures, I mean, you could put multiple copies mm -hmm. in your deck. Like, I think if you have creatures that come to the play abilities that you, you know, you might want to bounce, you could also just save one of your creatures from a removal spell and then bounce their biggest creature at that time, right? Yeah. So, I, I, I wouldn't mind playing two copies of it. Uh, I think it's yeah. a solid playable. I don't think, I don't think you're happy if you're taking it first or second pick, but I think it's a very solid playable. Like, yep, a very agree. solid CC plus, maybe. Sage of the Falls, four colorless and a blue, two five. 
When Sage of the Falls or another non-human creature enter the battlefield under your control, you may draw a card. If you do, discard a card. Huh, okay, so it's very overcosted for a 5-mana 2-5. It isn't uncommon as well. Okay, so it also procs on itself, so you play it, and then you can loot. Um, and it's a May ability, so it's not like you have to worry about decking yourself out. And I think this card is a card that's actually very obnoxious, just being on the board. Obviously, the stat line is very low, but if your opponent plays this and you can't deal with it, I, and honestly, I don't know how you deal with a 2-5 in most limited formats, because if you spend premium removal on it, like, well, you don't really want to do that anyways. But uh, you have a lot of hand, like card selection every single turn. I think this card's a lot better than it looks. Um, I might even want to give this a B. I agree. I'm with you. I think this is a this is like to me the definition of a B. Um, you don't really want to first pick it, but it's an early pick. This is a good card. It blocks while the turn it comes into play. If they have removal, you still get the one loot. And by the time you have five mana, it lands. You're happy to loot away. And if it stays around, uh, I mean, you're going to loot anytime like non-human creatures come into play. I mean, that's going to win you the game. It's kind of like season of growth. If turn after turn after turn is going by where you're scrying or you're looting, you're going to win because you get to have more resources. I think this is a very solid B. I, I yep, think this is a card you're not unhappy to take early. Yeah, and chat's also right as well with the uh, with, with the second draw mechanic, whatever people call that. That it goes up in value a lot. Like like your stuff is. I mean, it, it just basically becomes an engine. Of just playing something and then you get a buff immediately. It's pretty. It's pretty ridiculous, actually. Yeah. No, I, I agree with you. I, this is a, this is a B. This is not a C. This is a card that you know. This card makes your deck better. You know what I mean? Like this yep. is a card that I'm happy that I have. Cool card, man. Like five minute two five. Uh, it's weird. It's weird. No. I like Next card here. Oop. Hold on. It's loading here. Waiting for Scryfall. These cards are on Scryfall, guys, if y'all want to check it out. That's a place to look for it. Uh-oh. Hold on here. <laughs> okay. Well, we gotta wait for it to load. Mm. That's okay. My head was itching. I'll just scratch my head while it loads. Uh, is anyone else using Scryfall? Yeah, Scryfall's down for you as well. Uh-oh. <laughs> Okay, uh, let's see. How are we going to do this? Okay, let, uh, let me make a budget fix here. Let me make a budget fix. So uh, while Detsy's fixing uh, the fact that Scry falls down, if it's possible to fix, uh, what do you guys? What do you all think so far? How, what is the ratings that you disagreed with the most? Like, where where do you think like uh, we might be the most wrong? Because remember, this is first impressions. I mean, we don't even know the set. Mm -hmm. uh, this one doesn't rate it properly. Oh, sort by number. Okay. Okay. I think we can. I think I've got to work around. If anyone in the chat can let me know when Scry falls back up, because that's because that's where my uh, that's where my that's where my. Uh... So Disma Tank says uh, Runaway might be better. Yeah, I could see it. It's pretty powerful with Adventure. Uh, it depends how much sorcery speed removal there is, like expensive sorcery speed removal, because mm -hmm. then you can respond by saving your creature and bouncing theirs. Um, I mean, I think we gave that card like C plus ish rating, um, maybe solid C. Um, but yeah, that that could be more of a B if uh, there's enough expensive removal and uh, enough good adventure and things that make you want to bounce your own creatures. Yeah, um, I mean, but at the end of the day, that's still a card that re that requires certain certain, certain things, things to fall into place. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, remember so, a C is not this isn't like school. A C is not a bad rating. A C is like a card that you're basically never cutting. A C is like a fourth through six pick. Like Um Exactly, yeah. Singularity says Emery. I'm bad with names. Which one was Emery? Uh, somebody in chat said Scry Falls back up, Detsy, if you just want to go back to Oh, Scry Falls back up? All right. How convenient. 
Uh, the one mana Dark Confident, Strange Pond Lady. I don't even remember this card. Um, we probably haven't seen it then, right? Yeah, well, I asked which cards we underrated based on, um, you know, our ratings. Cards, um, yeah. I don't know if we've seen <clears throat> Dark Confident yet, so I'm not sure how we've... Oh, Emery Lurker, the lock. Okay, we saw that. I still don't know what it does. Oh, the one that oh it was the one that artifacts. Do you yeah, mills artifacts and gets stuff back or are something. Are you going to have a lot of artifacts in your deck? Because you, that card needs to be drawing you cards for it to be a good card. I don't know how many artifacts are in this format or how many blue artifacts are in this format. I think that if, if that card is not milling your artifacts or if your artifacts are never dying when you draw them, then that card's not drawing cards. So, like, how is that a good card? Now, if there are a ton of artifacts and you're... Because remember, milk four is not a lot. That's 10% of your deck, right? So if your deck has two artifacts in it, you're not milling an artifact very often. If your deck has four artifacts in it, you're milling an artifact, like, sometimes. I mean, so I don't know exactly how many artifacts are in the set and how playable the artifacts in the set are. Um, if you're going to mill an artifact or two when you play that, it's a good card. But if you w if you don't mill any artifacts, it's definitely not a good card. So it's a tough card to evaluate. Mm -hmm. um, if 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 blue artifacts is like what your deck is doing, then yes, that card is going to be better than we rated it. I agree with that. All right. So I think like one thing that's very important as well is that people always. I mean, it's very easy to just look at. Okay, well, when this card's great, it's very good, right? But then when the card's not good, like, well, it's really really bad and. I think that's very important to just uh, minimize, like, min-max kind of your deck, like, minimize the risk and just make sure that if you play, like, a thousand games of the deck, what's going to be the best configuration kind of thing? Yeah, and, uh, yeah, I, I agree with you. I think people are seeing the upside there and not the downside. The downside is pretty high. It's a three-mana one-two, right? <laughs> like, yeah. that, that's a horrendous card, a three-mana one-two, so. But it, I don't mind, yeah, but I don't mind people like that, you know, people who always look, look for the very best in somebody and others i like that all right so i think we're back online so should we go to the next card yep let's yeah let's go here all right so tiny one blue mana flash enchant creature enchanted creature gets minus two minus so it gets minus six minus so instead of minus two minus so if its controller has seven or more cards in their graveyard okay so it is an enchantment aura at a common it's basically so uh it's very similar to sea legs from ixalan like you a one mana flash you neuter something for two attack however this card does scale with the game so if they have seven or more cards in their graveyard it gets minus six minus so this is a card i actually like uh, i don't know how good it's gonna be but the fact that it scales makes it look a lot better than or uh, it make, makes it better than it actually looks i think um i don't think i can ever give this a b i think i'm happy just giving this a solid c yeah, uh, I agree with everything you said. Maybe uh, even lower. Yeah, that's uh, where I, I was going to go. Like, C minus, D plus. Like, I mean, if you're a defensive deck that's trying to mill them out, then this card's pretty good. If you're trying to attack the opponent at all, then this card's pretty bad. It doesn't yep. really kill a creature. Um, <laughs> it takes away a creature's okay. power, but it leaves the creature in play. So if you're trying to attack, like, it's not very effective as far as removal. If you're, But it seems like Blue's going to be quite defensive in this format, trying to win through card advantage and mill and things like mm -hmm. that so i would give it like a c minus probably yeah it's it is very interesting i mean i will i will also note in ixlon i probably at least a dozen times i accidentally put sea legs on my opponent's pirate and just lost the game on the spot um but uh yeah this is an interesting card i mean if you're using it as a combat trick it's this is fine. It's nothing special. Um, but yeah, if you're not attacking, I think this card's actually pretty reasonable. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to play this in my decks if I'm not <clears throat> concerned about attacking, really. Yep. Uh, so, I mean, that's why I'm going C minus. Yep. Okay. I agree with that. All right. Steel Gaze Griffin. Four colorless and a blue. Two, four, flying. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, it gets plus two plus zero oh until end of turn. Ooh, so the stat line of it, like the cost of it, it's not very impressive. Five mana for two four flyer, and then it has the second spell thing, but it's not a permanent counter or anything. Plus two plus zero. Oh. I think this card is like a fine playable. I honestly, I feel a little bit generous giving this a C. Maybe it's a sleeper card. I'm not sure, but 
I'm with you. I'm more of a D on this card. Um, okay. That's just not a lot of payoff. <clears throat> like, if you've already... You may have played your ops already. I mean, it costs five. Uh, five mana, two, four flyers, not a very good card. I mean, it, look, it's playable. That's why it's it's filler. And, of course, if you have a lot of synergy, then you're gonna pl then it goes up from a D to a C or whatever. But I don't think this is an exciting card, even if you're relatively good at triggering it. So this is like a D to me. I mean, you gave the white... The three four, the five minute three four Griffin a D, right? So right. if that's a D, I think this is easily a D as well. Then yeah, exactly. These two cards are pretty comparable. Like if you're good at triggering this, yeah. it'll be a four four a decent amount of the time. Uh, if you're not, then it's going to be a two four almost all the time. That's a three four. I mean, I just I, these cards are a D to me. They're just not exciting cards. Like they're filler. Like if you didn't get five drops and you're playing seventeen lands, then you'll put this card in your deck or you'll put that five mana three four white creature in your deck. But these are just not exciting cards in my opinion. Like to me, <clears throat> to me, this card feels like paying for insurance, but then every time you go to the doctor's office, you still need to like pay for, for the, uh, for like the, uh, what's the it called? Like, like, yeah, like copay and stuff like that. It's like, I already paid so much for this. Why do I need to pay more? Kind it, of thing. it sounds like you're describing the American healthcare system. We just, yeah. we just pay and then we pay and then we pay and we just pay and that's the end. <laughs> we just keep paying. <laughs> American healthcare, Griffin. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, okay. <laughs> Next card here. Stolen by the Fey, blue, blue, X. Return target creature with converted mana cost X to its owner's hand. You create X, one, one, blue, fairy creature tokens with flying. Wow, okay, so this is a rare. It is sorcery speed as well, so not instant speed. Um, so it has to be the exact converted mana cost. So you're not allowed to overpay for it to get more fairies. So, um, I mean, like, I, I, I don't, I don't know. Like, I want to give this card like a high A. This card's busted whenever it hits, and it's scalable as well. But, um, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Like, it's just very solid. Like, you always play it. It's just very good. You're, I, I think you're happy to first pick it. I don't even know. I, I, I don't know if it's an S. I think it's a very solid A. What do I you think, agree. Ben? Oh yeah, no, no, I agree. This is, this is a first <laughs> pick. This is a, this card. I mean. Sure, you can't overpay for it, but you'd rather generally bounce the more expensive things anyway. And I mean, yeah. if you bounce a five drop, for, I mean, look, you got to pay seven for that, but we're playing limited here, not modern. And if you bounce, uh, if you bounce a five drop here, you got five one one flyers. That's gonna win you the game. Now, I mean, sure, look, it's not super efficient in the early turns. Like on turn four, you could only bounce uh, a two drop with it. But mm -hmm. I mean, like. If you have nothing else to do on turn four and you bounce their two drop and you get two one one flyers, that's not a horrible four mana card. It's not exciting, but it's not horrible. And in the late game, when you bounce a, a four, five, six, seven mana creature, I mean, this just wins the game. So, I mean, I'm going to go an A. I, I don't think it's an S, but I think this is like a good first pick. Like, this is, a, this is a game winning card a lot of the time. But I mean, if S is like super broken and A is like good first pick, you know, like this is an A to me. Do you think that this card would be considered, or do you think that we could consider this card an S if if you're allowed to overpay for this? Yes, if you could overpay for this, I think it would be an S. Yeah. Yes, I think so as well. Um, but I mean, as it is, I think you're pretty unhappy if your opponent plays this against you. I mean, honestly, if you don't win after you play this, it's that's you. You probably weren't winning that game with any other card, anyways. So it's pretty sweet. Right. Seer, uh, I'm not going to pronounce this. Uh, dictionaries don't exist. Quote Death <laughs> C. I, I don't know. Eleonora, three colorless blue blue. Legendary creature, human knight. Eleonora's power is equal to the number of cards in your hand. Um, when it enters the battlefield, draw a card. Spells your opponent's cast to target it cost two more. So, boreal elemental ability. Uh, it's, five, it's three colors, two blue, five mana. And it has uh, four toughness. Its power is equal to the number of cards in your hand, and you draw a card when it comes into play. Yeah, uncommon, and it's a human knight as well. So th I, I think this is the first blue knight we've seen. It might it might be the only blue knight. Uh, I don't know, but uh, I mean, like five mana, you, you get a thing and it draws a card. That seems really sweet to me. Um, 
Like, I, and and it kind of protects itself as well. I don't know. Like, I can see this being anywhere from a B to an A, so somewhere in that sphere. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I've got it as a B. I wouldn't call it an A. Um, <laughs> I like that it draws a card, um, but it's still mostly a five mana four four that draws a card. Uh, yeah, it's a good card. It's not a slam. Um, second pick, third pick quality. This is a solid B in my opinion. Yeah, I I think so as well. Uh, this is something that incentivizes you to hold lands stuff in the late game um this is a card that doesn't scale that well i think unless you have like mass card draw like into the story and stuff uh, and that's kind of cool that you can change that at um instant speed but overall i think that this effect alone does not warrant an a i think i'm happy with the b yeah i i i don't i wouldn't give this an a like to me like you know like look you get a card back so it's five minute draw card you get some you get four toughness block it's always going to block okay with four toughness but it's not going to have that much power at all times. Like, solid B. Yeah. Um, I I think instead of the evasion clause on it, where it costs, or sorry, not the evasion clause, but where it dodges removal a little bit, where they need it, where they need a, uh, where, where where they get taxed two mana if they sp uh, cast something that that the targets this. Instead of that, if it had any other keyword, I think that this card would be better as well. Oh yeah, if um, it had flying, it would be a, a substantially better card. Like if it had yeah. flying, it would be like a five mana four four flyer that draws a card. Yeah. But uh, you know that that ability is nice, but it's not a big deal. Yeah, exactly. Because if I, I I mean if they kill it, you you already got your card out of it anyways. Like I I don't know. Okay. Tome rhymes with home raider. Um, <laughs> that's how my chat taught me how to pronounce tome because I used to always call it tomb. <laughs> Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Two colorless and a blue. One one flying. When it enters the battlefield, draw a card. Uh, so this is like. Uh, I mean, it's base. I mean, it's just Cloud Concealer with one less attack. And honestly, I I think there's more balance. I think that like, I was kind of unsure in M20 if Cloud Concealer should have been an uncommon even. But uh, this is like this is like the normal. Uh, like sky scanner type three mana cycle a thing you get a thing i think it's i think it's very reasonable i think it's like maybe a low c for me i agree c minus um they realized cloud can see her. they went too far they adjusted it this is <laughs> this is what it should be at common you'll usually play it you'll cut it from your best x <clears throat> c minus d plus c minus yeah. more like c minus than d plus yeah i think so and obviously it goes up if you have fairy synergies, which I don't think we've seen any fairy synergies. No, so far. but it does hit that draw two cards in a turn synergy. So I mean That's true. Yeah, so that's why it's a C. Like, you know, C minus, and then you know, if you have a couple cards that make you want to draw two cards in a turn, now it's like a C plus instead of a C minus. So That's true. Uh turn into a pumpkin. Three <laughs> colorless and a blue. <laughs> Instant. They weren't messing around with the flavor in this format. They didn't hold back. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. Draw a card. Adamant. If at least three blue mana was spent to cast this, create a food token. Wow. The, like, the food token seems super random to me, but, uh, I mean, I guess it is an upside, if you call it an upside. Um, return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. So non-land permanent, that's pretty important as well. And you get a draw card. I mean, it is expensive, but, like, I love cards like this. Uh, I think... Like the one extra mana, like uh, uh, for example, Arrestor's Admonition and Crashing, Crashing Tide, I believe it is. Um, three mana, bounce something, but you basically have to do it at sorcery speed in order to get the card. Mm. I think this card's pretty sweet. It'll depend on what other stuff you can do at instant speed, but I like it. Um, it is uncommon. I don't know if I want to give it a B or a C. I, I'm actually unsure. What do you think, Ben? Uh, I'm with you. Uh, it's a B, not a, not definitely not an A. Closer to a C than an A, but it's a B. I think. Uh, yeah, it's like a, good, a low, B. low B. It's a good trick. You get a card. Uh, you'll be able to get the food token a lot because this isn't like a creature where you want to play it on curve on turn four every time. If you have a four drop creature and this in your hand on turn four, you're going to play the creature by choice like a lot of the time. Yeah. So you'll be able to sink three blue into this uh, more often than not. So I, I think this is like a low B. Uh, and also since it's non-land permanent, that means that you can do a lot of shenanigans with it as well. It's a card that I'm probably going to be looking to play quite quite a lot at least in the early phases unexplained vision four colorless and a blue draw three cards adamant if at least three blue mana was spent uh scry three as well 
and it's a sorcery. Wow, and it's a common as well. Uh, man, so this this really uh, seems seems um, reminiscent of of a pre precognitive perception from Ravening Allegiance. Obviously, that one was a rare and instant speed as well, and you didn't need the adamant. But uh, at a common, like if. If, if, if the format isn't blazing fast, isn't this card just fantastic? I don't, I, I don't know. Like, there does seem to be a lot of card draw, but um, I don't know how easy it is to splash either. If you're like a non-blue control deck, maybe you can splash this. Not like not that you usually want to splash card draw, but this one does draw three. Uh, if you're playing mainly blue, you can oftentimes scry as well at some point. I think I don't know. This card seems good. Is it too high to give this a B? No. Yeah, I could see a low B. Um... I mean, you're not going to want a lot of the the card drawing, right? Like, you don't... Yeah. Even if the cards are good, you're not going to play two on Explained Vision and two um, Into the Story, or whatever that card was called, uh, in your deck, because then you just have four cards that you can't cast ever, basically, and then don't even impact the board when you do cast them. But if you're looking to go up cards, uh, once you have mana, this card does that really well. Scry 3 is a big game. Once you have five mana, you'll have three blue a lot of the time. Plus, you're not always looking to play your card drawing on curve. Like, this is the kind of card where if you have this and a five drop, you'd rather play the other five drop, and then you play this, you know, after you've played your other stuff. So I, I mm -hmm. think that this is a good card. <laughs> um, C plus, B minus. Um, I am not, like, I don't get super duper excited about card drawing like some people. Like, I, I kind of come more <laughs> from the uh, Martin Musa school of uh, impact the board, like, uh -huh. pressure the opponent's. But, uh, you know, in the right decks, in the right matchups, it's really powerful. If you're a control deck, you definitely want some good card drawing late game. This this compares to Precognitive Perception, I think it was called. the uh, yeah. the It was like draw three, scry three. Also, if you played it on your turn, it was an instant in that uh, clear the mind format. It was five mm -hmm. mana, draw three. And then if you played it on your turn, you also got scry three. Now, that card was quite good. But also, uh, that's what Blue wanted to do in that format. That's true. And there was seemed like there was less uh, good access to stuff like that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go high C, low B. I think it's a okay. I think it's a fine card to take third pick, fifth pick. I think you definitely want a copy or two of this in your deck. But I don't think you want to go too nuts with how much card drawing there is there is in this format, or you might just die to attacking knights. So I'm gonna go like yeah. like high C, low B. <clears throat> It is it is very interesting and since we are going to cover black today uh i will mention that there is a clear the vine esque card in the format so uh i i, I don't know like all all i'm saying all i'm saying is that the pieces are there you know the pieces mm. are there for like drawn cards and shuffling things back in so hopefully that's something that is possible uh if the format's not too fast but yeah the, this is a card that obviously has diminishing returns but um Powerful. Okay. Ooh, this next one's interesting here. Vantress Gargoyle. Artifact creature. A colorless and a blue to cast. 5-4 flying. <clears throat> okay, so it's a 2-mana 5-4 flyer, so let's see what the drawback is. Vantress okay. Gargoyle can't attack unless defending player has 7 or more cards in their graveyard. Vantress Gargoyle can't block unless you have 4 or more cards in your hand. It taps to make each player put the top card of their library into their graveyard. Oh, man. This card is so hard to evaluate. Like, okay, first things first is that usually cards of this are a trap. Like, I I honestly believe that Wizards deliberately prints his cards like like Jace's Phantasm and stuff like that. Just like, just to bait casuals into making mill decks. But uh, the thing is that this card is super interesting because at some point in the game, assuming that you're a deck that likes to attack, which means that you're playing your stuff out from your hand, at some point this thing just doesn't block. But I guess I guess at that point you want to be attacking anyways. And But if you're milling them, there's always a cost to milling. So it's not like, oh yeah, the, well, the mill is free and uh, you, know, you just get to be like full-on aggressive and this thing's going to activate eventually. Um, it does mill on its own for the from the tap ability but honestly i have no idea how to evaluate this card ben um i'm not even going to give this a rating right now like I, I honestly like if i had to give this a rating immediately i would probably say it's like a high d low c but i could be extremely wrong on this what do you think 
it, I mean, it is a really hard card to evaluate. Um, I mean, it's better with card drawing. Like, if you play, if you have those card drawing spells, then you can refuel up to four cards in hand in the late game and then block with yeah. them when you need to. I like that it's an early blocker because it looks like blue is very controlling in this format from what we've seen. I mean, we're at, we're on V, we're going alphabetically, so the blue cards in this format do not seem aggressive at all. It seems like blue is about drawing cards, milling, decking, winning the late game through card advantage. Yeah. Um, so I like that this is going to block early, but I don't like that it's not going to be able to block in the mid game. Um, you don't want to necessarily lose your ability to block, but at the same time, it's not a heavy mana investment. This only costs two. Yeah. So, I mean, I think if you're trying to deck them, this is going to do a pretty good job of that. If you play it on turn two, like pretend it wasn't even a creature. Pretend this was just like a mill effect only, right? If you play this on turn two, you mill a card every turn. You got like seven, eight, nine mills by, by the late game. And then, of course, it can stop your opponent from attacking. It has flying and you have four cards in hand on turn two and three. Mm -hmm. So I think it's better than it looks i don't think it's a trap it's still somewhat situational so i'm gonna go like b i'm gonna go like, like a b yeah i'm gonna mm. go like 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 i think this could be like a b i mean there are definitely decks that wouldn't even play this card there are definitely decks where like you wouldn't put this card in your deck but i think blue is going to be about drawing cards i think milling is probably real though i don't know yet and uh, I, I think that blue is going to be a defensive deck about drawing cards and stuff like that. So I, I'm going to go B, but I'm, I agree with what you said. This is a hard card to evaluate. Uh, this card, I could be completely wrong. I would not be shocked if I'm wrong and this turns out to be unplayable. But I'm giving my opinions, I'm but, guessing, and I'm, I'm going to go with B. I think this might be a good card because of the way the format might play out. Yeah, and also at the same time, you know... Uh, on the opposite side of it being unplayable, like I also wouldn't be surprised if this card was just like one of the best, <laughs> like one of the best blue, or, or maybe may, maybe even one of the best rares in the set. Where it's like on turn two, it's just super obnoxious and it's well statted. Everything is actually quite easy to make work. And even if you're a control deck, you have just an ability to to kill them in four turns in the sky as well yeah, uh, so after blocking. Here's the thing, right? There's going to be some frustration when you lose a game because you can't block with this, right? And you're mm -hmm. blue decking, yeah. you're defensive. But remember, this isn't a five drop. You only spent two mana on this, right? Mm -hmm. It's hard to be productive on turn two and limited, especially when you're defensive. And this is a card that will shut down their ground game and, and their air game if they have that. But whatever, this will shut down the opponent's ability to attack you on turns two, three, and four when you have four cards in hand, right? And so that's pretty good for two mana out of a defensive deck. Even if it loses its ability to block after that, then it's not a great card, but it stopped your opponent's early aggression, and you're a defensive yeah. deck. So that's why I'm giving it kind of a high rating of a B. I completely agree it's a hard card to evaluate, but I like that in the early game, this will stop the opponent from attacking me if I'm trying to play a blue defensive deck that has a good late game. Yep. I... I think I'm happy to go to B as well, and honestly, like this this card could be anything. I have no idea. <laughs> oh, it's a really hard card to evaluate. I don't think we've ever seen a card like this. I've been playing Magic since 1994. I don't think I've seen a card like this. This is there's nothing to compare it to. It's like Yu-Gi-Oh or something. It's crazy. Okay. Vantress Paladin, three colorless and a blue, two two flying. Adamant, if at least three blue mana was spent to cast this spell, it enters the battlefield with a plus one, plus one counter on it. Oh, man. This feels like a low pick to me. Um, I think it's going to be a like like a D. It's going to be a, like a C or even a B in the like nearly mono blue decks. But even in like the deck that's primarily blue, but, you, but you're not mono blue, if you're playing this as a four mana 2-2, two, two, you're very upset, so... Yeah, it's tricky because a 4-mana 3-3 flyer is a good card. A 4-mana 2-2 flyer is a bad card, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, I'm guessing that Adamant makes it, you know... I mean, we can't evaluate Adamant cards, right? If you're mono blue, this is just always a 4-mana 3-3 flyer, and then it's like a B, yeah. right? Yeah, if exactly. You have, if you have nine uh, islands in your deck, it's a bad 4-drop because most of the time it's going to be a 2-2, two -two, but then, like, by turn 5 or 6, it's going to be a 3-3 three -three most of the time. I mean... This is like a math problem that if Frank Karsten's out there listening, you should attack. Like, let's say you have nine islands in your deck. Uh, on average, how how many, like, 
what percentage of the time will you have three of them on turn four? What percentage of the time will you have three of them on turn five? What percentage of the time will you have three sure. of them on turn six? What time, you know, I think that it's an interesting math problem to try and come up with this creature's average power and toughness, let's say, based on each turn that you could, that you could cast it if you had, say, nine islands in your deck. Um, I'll give it a C. Uh, but I, I mean, really, I think it's going to be hard to evaluate adamant because it just every additional land you have is going to raise the adamant uh, ability like substantially. That's like, if, like if I have seven islands, this is not a playable card, I don't think at all. And if I have mm -hmm. mono blue, it's a four mana three three flyer, right? So I mean, it's a really tough card to evaluate, but uh, mm -hmm. I'll give it a C. Okay. We're almost under the blue here. Wishful Merfolk. Color, one colorless and a blue, 3 2 defender. For two mana, it loses defender and it stops being a Merfolk and becomes a human. Well, it doesn't stop being a Merfolk, it just becomes a human. So it's a human and a Merfolk. That is. I mean, first of all, I love the flavor of this card. That's really cool. Uh, I don't know. Like, this card, see, I mean, how much better is this than Mo Piranhas? I mean, I assume it's substantially better because it, you know, you can actually attack with it in the late game. Two minute, three, two, like, I mean, it's trading with three drops as well. I honestly, I have no idea. Like, uh, at first glance, probably like a low C for me. Maybe it's higher. No, I'm with you. Um, the, the toughness matters. Moat Piranha is a good blocker because of that third toughness. Yep, uh, I while, agree. Yeah, and like, and if you're trying to be aggressive, you can't be spending two mana to just get to attack. It is nice that in the late game, you know, you, you can spend two and attack, but this is a pretty bad card, I think. I would go low C, high D. Uh, it could definitely make your deck, but I also think you'll be cutting this from your best decks. Yep, exactly. Like, this is a pretty easy card to cut from the main board, right? Like, a card that you're probably happy to bring in against, like, certain aggressive decks. But, yeah. Somebody, yeah, and... somebody in my chat just said from uh, Frank Karsten's table with nine blue <clears throat> sources, you have 52% to have um, three by turn four, 68% uh, by turn five, 81% by turn six. I can't confirm those numbers or anything. But okay. um, if, if that's true, that actually doesn't bode too well for the card because, I mean, you want to be able to play your four drops on turn four and uh, you yeah. don't want to play a four mana 2-2 two -two flyer. That's a pretty bad card. So I I think based on if those numbers are accurate and if you're a two-color deck. Of course, if you're a mono blue deck, now it's a four mana 3-3 three, three flyer. Now it's a good card. Now it's like a B. But if, based on those numbers, if you're a two-color deck with nine islands, I think it might be more of like a D than a, than a C. I think you were right on the uh, the mm -hmm. rating on that four mana 2-2 two, two flyer. Yeah. Okay. Last but not least for the blue cards here. I mean, look, we only uh, spent about two hours going through blue, right? <laughs> I mean, to be fair, blue is the best color, so it should get the most time, right? That's true, and it probably has the most text as well. Right, witching well, one blue. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to piss off some people for sure, right? Because I just declared <laughs> blue the best color. Uh, witch witching well, one blue mana artifact. When witching well enters the battlefield, scry two. Uh, four mana sack witching well, draw two cards. Man, I love this card. There are certain types I like certain types of cards I love in Magic. Uh, this card fits that kind of design space, uh, the design philosophy of the you know do 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 something early, do something uh, later. Two mana to scry two, obvious or sorry, one mana to to enter the battlefield scry two is not that exciting, but it's fine. And then later on, you get to uh, spend four mana to. Uh, sacrifice and a draw two card and there's like artifact synergies and stuff there's like the um, fairy that puts counters on something puts puts four counters on something and, and and it can attack i think witching well i don't know i think this might be the hottest take that we've had tonight or at least for me but this might be the best blue common for me and i think that this card is i'm just gonna give this card an a <laughs> wow for whatever uh, reason. yeah you went high there so i love this card too i love the design uh and I agree with you. It's it could easily be the best blue common. It's pretty close to the um, like the good removal and uh, potentially like the bounce your creature in theirs. I'm gonna give it a B. I, I love the design okay. of the card, but I don't. That's very it, high as well. Yeah. Yeah, I I don't I see this as like a good like third pick, <laughs> a bad first pick. I don't see this as a good first pick, but I do think it's a really sweet card. I love Scry early because if you, you could you could draw this this card creates a lot of value in a few scenarios right like imagine you have a good one land hand where your spells aren't that expensive and you have this card suddenly you get to keep instead of mulliganing right 
With Scry mm -hmm. 2, you can keep a one land hand, assuming your hand isn't very expensive. Uh, so, I mean, and also, like, this just helps you with your land drops. In your more normal two to three land hands, you play this early, you scry, you, you dig to your lands, you never miss a land drop, you cash it in for more cards in the late game, artifact synergies. I, I'm with you. I think this is a really sweet card. I think there's a card that's going to be a lot better than it looks. But I don't think it's an A. Like, I don't mm -hmm. think I'm happy if I'm first picking this. So I'm going to give this card a B. I think this is just a very solid B. Yeah, I think, uh, honestly, if I had to put my life on the line, I would also give it a B, but since I'm not, I'm going to give it an A. Oh, I'm with you. <laughs> I I'm mean... with, dude, we, like, we're soulmates here. Like, I'm with you. Like, yeah. I love this card. Like, you know, I, I'm not going to give it an A in terms of power, but I'll give it an A in terms of how much I love it. Like, this is just yeah. a beautifully designed card. It's going to be a lot of fun to play with it. This is the kind of card like Skittering Surveyor that's just going to make the format better. It's going to lead to choices, but not run over the opponent. I mean, this is a this is an A in terms of design, a B in terms of power level. Fantastic. I mean, but we definitely agree that it's better than a C. Like, I, I don't think there's any way that this card can be a C. No, no, you're hap You're going to be happy to third pick this card in most of your blue decks. Absolutely. Mm. This, this is a. B. And also, as my chat mentions as well, it also procs the uh, the uh, the uh, second the second draw ability on your opponent's turn. So that's pretty cool. Yep. So that is pretty cool. Yeah. You can sack it on their turn, so you can trigger that on their turn when you wouldn't be able to otherwise. Yeah. Wow, that's cool. Uh, oh, save the vest for last. All right. Okay. Uh, that is all for blue. Are you fine with doing black? Yeah. As well. Yeah. Let's let's do one more. Uh, I, okay. I don't stay up as late as you, but I, I'm not early to bed. <laughs> I know I, I can do one more. Let's let's do black. All tonight. right. All right, guys. So this is uh, again. Thank you, everyone, for coming to hang out with us. Uh, we we do appreciate it. This is our first time doing a, re a review together. And again, this is for limited only. Our rating criteria is below here. It's a very loose rating criteria. It just helps. I don't know. It just helps um, notate, I guess, uh, relative power levels of cards. But uh, you know, you guys, you guys get the idea. So we're moving on to black now. Area first of Lockbane. triple black. Legendary creature. She's an elf noble, a rare as well. Uh, two three. Whenever she or another black creature enters a battlefield under your control, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. Uh, tap, sack another black creature, draw a card. Hmm. So this uh, is yeah, yeah. this is a card that's Sorry. gonna vary greatly. Like. If you can play this on turn three, it's an incredible card because you're going to have tons of creatures to play after it. If you play this card at the end of the game, it's not a very good card because you're not going to have any creatures left to play after it. So, I mean, if you're mono black, I mean, this is an A. I'm not an S, but it's an A in a mono black deck. But if you're nine swamps in your deck, according to the Frank Karsten table we just heard, you're only 50% to cast it on turn three, about 65 on turn four. This is not a good turn five or six play. Like, it's not a great turn six play when you have no more creatures in your hand. So, I'm going to give this card, like, a high C, low B. Hmm. I also think it's something around a C as well. I think C is the, C's the rating I'm going to give it for multiple reasons. So, again, as you said, it's it's it really wants to be played on curve. And I think not played on curve, it's pretty... It's a pretty unreasonable card. It's just like not that exciting. Um, the ability is not a mana ability either. Like I would prefer that to be a mana ability because you need to wait an entire turn to like sacrifice it. So at that point, like if we're comparing cards like, across sets, like Spark Reaper is a card that, in my opinion, is fantastic. is a much better card than this. I think this card is also missing like a keyword, something like Death Touch or something or Menace or something. Um, I think for me, this is just a solid <coughs> C. So, I mean, I don't know if Spark Reaper is better than this in the sense that, um, I mean, casting cost aside, in the sense that you don't want to have to sack your creatures to drain and stuff. You want to just get uh -huh. that for free. But I agree that Spark Reaper might actually just be better because of the casting cost. I mean, this card has got to come out before your creatures for it to be a good card. So, yeah, I'm probably a little too high on it. You're right, I think. I'd like to mm -hmm. amend. I'd like to amend down uh, to a solid C, maybe even mm -hmm. less of, less of, not, not in the B range. But I do want to throw out, I think you're right. I think, uh, I think I'm a little too high on this. But I, I want to throw out the caveat that if you're mono black, this is just a great card. Yeah. I think I, I think the last thing I don't like about this is that it can't sacrifice, like she can't sacrifice herself, which makes sense flavor-wise. But I don't, I don't know. Like, personally, I don't feel like it's broken if it was just, sac like, you can sacrifice any creature. I don't think it'd be broken if it was sacrifice any 
other creature, not only black creatures. So I think that all the restrictions there, it's definitely like a constructed centric card. Maybe again, it's a nod to a Theros coming back, and maybe we'll see Devotion again because I think that that was a fantastic mechanic as well. Yeah, no, you're so, uh, you're absolutely right. More of a C minus, if anything, uh, in a yeah. two color deck. And then, but it is like like a like an A to a B plus in a, in a mono black deck. This yeah, is a, this is a exactly. good this is a good card in a mono black deck. And I think exactly, what we're going to exactly. see. So what I think what we'll see in this format is a lot of heavy one color with a little bit of a second color decks. We, we're rating cards right now, right, as though you're either two colors or one. But, yep. what, but what happens when you play 13 swamps and five islands for you, a couple of the blue card drawing, like six blue cards and or four, four, four blue cards and 19 black cards or something in your deck, yep. right? So, I mean, there is an in-between here, too. So I like this card as a solid C. Uh, not good in straight two color decks, very good in mono black decks. Uh, and then of course, just every swamp you have past nine starts to raise this thing's value. Assuming you have a ton of black creatures. Yeah. And I think, again, this is another topic for our future podcast or whatever, but, uh, like in limited, a lot of times, I mean, I personally think that people splash too much in limited, but sometimes you just have to splash for a bomb or something, especially if your deck is very low power level uh and uh, and i don't know like uh, and if that splash is worth it this card's not gonna be worth it either probably so i don't know there's just um a lot of nuances that in limited cards like these are probably gonna be a little bit worse than, than they look i agree with you not that good a card outside of mono black all right next card here bake into a pie sweet four mana so that's two colorless two black Instant speed at common. Destroy target creature, and you get to create a food token. I mean, good, solid, efficient removal. Seems like a format that uh, there's going to be important things to deal with. I'll give it an A. Uh, not a high A, like a low A, but uh, it's a first pickable card, I think. Yeah, and also creates a food token, which uh, provides like sustain later on as well. So, yes, it is a little bit overcosted. Um, but, uh, but, but, but in all honesty, is it overcosted? Like, like, like for limited is not right. Like, no. like for limited, it's just fantastic. Right. For like, constructed, is just under, right. Yeah. For constructed, maybe it's a little bit overcosted <laughs> for limited. You're happy to pay four mana and destroy a creature at instant speed. Murder was undercosted. Like, yeah, murder's undercosted. Usually you need five mana, right? To kill somebody at sorcery speed. So this card's pretty sweet. I think I'm happy with a low A. Um, in general, I think I rate my re like removal like this a little bit lower than you do. Like this would be like a high B for me, I think. Uh, but I'm down with a low A. I, I think that makes a lot of sense as well. Just uh, just pretty unconditional. I like depends how, on the I, stat lines. I like so. how you use the word sustain in the description of this, since it makes a food. Joke <laughs> and it's called bacon to pie. You know, food sustains you. Uh, and I like how there's like a hand reaching out of it. Really sweet card. Yeah. You thought you were just going to slip that one by and we weren't going to notice. Yeah, I actually actually I have a phrase for that. It's called um it's called hidden pun. So like you just a uh, hidden pun and then you know you don't even talk about it. Those are probably the kind of puns I like the best cuz I hate the like puns that are just over the top and stupid, but I like a I like a good clever pun. Like when something is actually on point and fits everything you're doing and it's a pun, then I like it. You know what I mean? I like a clever pun, but I hate the like punning for the sake of punning. Oh, so basically you don't like any of LSV's jokes? Correct. Uh okay. Next card here. <laughs> uh God bless LSV. Okay. Uh next card here, Barrow Witches. Five mana. Human Warlock at common, 3-4. When Barrow Witches enters the battlefield, return target Knight card from your graveyard to your hand. Seems good to me. I mean, if that's a 5 mana 3-4 Gravedigger, <clears throat> uh, I haven't really counted how many Knights there are, but I'll give it like a B. It's a weird card though, right? Like, returning and like, what the... This Witch, that's not a Witch, but it's actually a Warlock. I guess the magic is the same thing. And you return a Knight from your graveyard hand. That's weird. I almost want to give this a C. I, I, I again, like it, 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 it does depend on like what the knight decks are doing, but like, I guess that's fine if you just have normal knights, even if you're not aggressive, just because this card's not aggressive itself either. I mean, it's finally statted, but. I mean, if you're returning a knight every time, it's it's a good card. Like, it would be more like an A if you were returning a knight every time, but yeah. it could easily be a C or a D. Even if you're, I mean, if you have two knights in your deck, I mean, you're not going to have one in the graveyard that often, so it's more like a D. 
But if you have eight knights in your deck, you're returning one almost every time. So it's really hard to evaluate synergy cards. Uh, could easily be a C and not a B. I'm giving it a B because I'm assuming that there's plenty of knights in black and white, and you're just going to have a lot of knights, and you're going to prioritize knights if you draft this card. But, yeah. uh, but I could be wrong on that. It just really depends on the knight count. It's a synergy card. Yep, and a 3-4 is just obnoxious, right? Like, that's just a... Uh... That's just um, a lot of value for a five-minute card. All right, here. Next card, uh, Bell of the Brawl. Three mana, human knight, uncommon, three, two. She has menace, and whenever she attacks, other knights you control get plus one, plus O oh, until end of turn. Seems like a pretty solid B to me. It's a good aggressive yeah. creature. It's hard to block. Uh, I won't be happy first picking this, but I'll be happy third picking it, I think. Yeah, and I think that, uh, of course, it does depend, again, on, like, how the knights play out and stuff like that. And I think that the knights are in other color. Like, there's a lot of knights in other colors. But, uh, I mean, even on its own, three mana, three, two menace, like, that's a, that's a very, uh, just a very reasonable card. So I think I'm happy with a B. Okay, next card here, Black Lance Paragon. Two mana, one colorless and a black. It's a human knight, rare, 3-1 with flash. When uh, Paragon enters the battlefield, target knight gains death touch and lifelink until end of turn. So it can target itself as well. So this is a pretty cool card. I mean, again, these synergy cards. I mean, if, you, if your deck is all knights, this card is an A. Um, if your deck has two knights in it, you're not going to be doing much with this besides it being a two mana three one flash um so i mean i'm gonna go with a b assuming that um there's you're gonna have bearing amounts of knights and uh this card is playable on its own but only exciting if you have a lot of knights yep i think i'm happy with a b as well i think this card is not exciting like personally i think that like mostly these knight cards have been very unexciting in terms of design like it's pretty obvious what they do it's a uh, just very focused on other knight synergies and attacking and stuff. It's not that special to me, um, but uh, power-wise, like, it's fine. Just to be, I'm happy with the B. Yeah, I mean, it's worth noting that it, it can target itself, so it can trade up with, like, a big green creature mm -hmm. that's attacking you or something like that. But, of course, uh, it doesn't have haste. So if it's targeting itself, and you're not getting value out of Death Touch and Lifelink unless you're blocking with it. So, and yeah. then it's dying, yeah. Yeah, so I'm with you. Uh, you know, we agree. Solid B. Yep. Bog naughty, whoa! Someone's been, uh, you know, touching that devil's lettuce. Five mana, fairy, uncommon, three three flyer, three mana, sacrifice a food. Target creature gets minus three minus three until end of turn. So huh. if 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 you just got food like every game, like this card would be incredible. It would be, it would be an A. I mean, it wouldn't be an S, but it would be an A. <laughs> We haven't mm -hmm. actually seen that much food production. I was kind of expecting more, but I'm kind of glad there isn't more. I love when Wizards uh, presents you with choices like, oh, like I need to value food higher now because I have Bognati. Oh, I need to value sure. food lower now because I don't have a lot of food synergies. Like I don't like when you're just hit over the head with stuff. I like when you kind of have to work for it. So I like the amount of food we've seen, but I haven't seen very much. But I, yeah. I, I literally haven't looked at the other, like very many of the previews. So if red and green are just the food colors, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't even know right now. Based on what we've yeah. seen so far, I haven't seen a lot of food production. So I'm going to give this like a C. But this card could easily okay. be more like an A if if there's just tons of food production in black, red, and green. I don't really know. Yeah, I mean, five man for three D flyer is just fine. Um... Nothing too, too spectacular, but yeah, like, obviously, if, if, if you, honestly, I, I don't think, I, I think if you cannot make two food, at least two food in your deck, then you just don't play this card. But, um, yeah, it's hard for sure. I think I'm gonna give it, like, a low B. The upside's definitely there. Oh, yeah. To yeah. build around as well. And it's very ridiculous, right? Like, if, if you have a food, it's just obnoxious. This is, this is too much. So, yeah, the upside's there for sure. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's decks where this card is an A. There's no question. Yeah, uh, but exactly. I'm, but I'm guessing on average, it's not going to be that good in your deck. Sure, sure. Okay, next card here. Cauldron Familiar. Everybody's favorite one-mana cat. 
okay. Everybody loves one mana cats. I think you can probably build like a Dread Malk and Cat Deck Tribal and construct it with like an Icon of Ancestry or something. Okay, Cauldron, <laughs> familiar, one mana cat, common, one one. Enters the battlefield, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. Sacrifice a food, return Cauldron familiar to your grave from your graveyard to your battlefield. Uh, seems like a D to me, maybe even an F. Uh, <laughs> you don't really want to be sacking your food to get back a 1-1 one -one to drain them. Drain for one is not really a good ability. Like, D minus, maybe even an F, I don't know. It's it's cool flavor-wise, because, like, you leave your... It's like a straight cat, right? And then you leave your food out, and then it comes back. Uh, cool. Oh, sure. I mean, I'm not giving it flavor ratings. I mean, you know, we all... Should we do a flavor rating review? We all know I'm not a flavor judge. Uh, that's that's official. That's been declared. Ben Stark, not a flavor judge. Um, so, I mean, just on power level, I'm going to give it like a D minus to an F. Uh, yeah. But yeah, cool flavor, sure. Yeah, I think I think I'm going to go with a D minus as well. And honestly, D feels very good, so... I mean, like, that, that Witch's card we just looked at, right? Like, that's a card... If, if there's a lot of food production in red, green, and black, mm -hmm. then that card is an A, right? Or, like, a B. Sure. Uh, because, like, if you can just play this on tap and then start killing all their creatures with your food tokens, that's a really powerful card, right? This card, yeah. even if you have a ton of food out, who cares? Like, this is just <laughs> not... This is just not a good card. <laughs> yeah. Uncommon as well. Like, I'm, I, I mean, I'm happy that it's uncommon so that we don't see it as often, but... Ooh, all right. This is like a big, mythic, dumb artifact. Cauldron of, of Eternity. Ten colorless and two black, so that's 12 mana. Legendary artifact at mythic rare. This spell costs two less to cast for each creature card in your graveyard. Whenever a creature you control dies, put it on the bottom of its owner's library. Now, you can also tap it and spend three mana to pay two life. Return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Activate this ability only anytime you could cast a sorcery. Wow, there's a lot of stuff going on here, Ben. Um, uh, what do I you think, think? Like, I think this card is like an S. I mean, this is to me, this card is not like a trap. I mean, this is yeah. uh, just a busted, busted magic card. I mean, if you have four creatures in your graveyard, which happens all the time in limited, this costs four mana, and then it costs six mana, right? Oh, sorry, no, 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 four, per. yeah, yeah, four, four is eight, yeah, sorry. Yeah, it's uh, two yeah, less it per, mana, right? and it's not that hard to get four creatures in your graveyard and limited. You're not looking to play this card early, this is your finisher, sure. and, like, who can beat that? I mean, if you have four creatures in your graveyard, you spend, you have seven mana out, you pay four, you play this, you put a creature right back into play for the rest of the game, maybe, like, an A plus, S minus, like, I don't, I don't I'm yeah. not saying, like, this is not in contention for best rare in the set or anything, so, like, maybe, like, A plus, like, not, not, like, uh, not, like, super S, but, like, this is a game-winning effect. I mean, you're gonna play this card for two mana, and then immediately use it, if you have five creatures in the yard, this costs two mana, so if you have five, six lands in play, you get to play this for two mana, use it immediately, put your best creature back in play. Next turn, mm -hmm. use it, put in your best creature back in play. I mean, that wins the game. So, I mean, A plus, S minus, like, very powerful, not in contention for best friend in the set, but definitely a first pick, in my opinion. I think two interesting things about this card for me is that, first of all, it kind of has, like, a clear the mind-esque effect on it. So, like, it, it it's something that mitigates decking out. So whenever one of your creatures dies, you put it in the bottom of, the, of your library which is uh, very relevant, especially if you're drawing a bunch of cards. Or for example, if you're playing like Demir or something, or you're playing blue-black and um, you're drawing a bunch of cards and you have some creatures that die. Secondly is that the existence of food in this format, uh, and we've already seen some food on uh, black cards, like the uh, four mana murder card. It, it does offset like the life gain because a lot of times like things like... Uh, things like the Blood Sold Altar, for example, in M20, it's a powerful card, but... A lot of times in the late game, you just have no way to gain life and stuff like that. So, so, so I get why people want to compare those cards, but the mm -hmm. cost on that card and the cost on this card are worlds apart. That card yep, requires you to sack a creature and discard a card. You have to go down and two, two cards to make a 5-5. Five five. It's always six mana. Yeah, this card is going to cost two mana. It's going to cost four mana. Like, it, it, you're going to play it. You're going to pay two life. You don't have to discard a card, and you don't have to sack a creature. All you have to do is pay two life. So this card just wins any stalemate. This card just wins any late game. 
it's pretty easy to get creatures in the graveyard. The, the trigger, whenever a creature dies, put on the bottom, that doesn't affect the creatures that are already in your graveyard. So you're going to trade off all your creatures, play this thing on turn six or seven for two mana or four mana, use it immediately. You don't have to have any other cards in hand. You don't have to disco, you don't have to sack creatures in play. This card is a lot better than Alter. Uh, so, you know, again, it's a complex card. I've been wrong before. I'll be wrong again. But, like, to me, this is, like, an S minus, A plus, like, quite good. It's super interesting, because looking at both of our chats here, uh, my chat has quite a few people saying, like, S, 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 and then, and then in your chat, there's, I, I actually see some Ds and Cs here. I think it's, I think it's very interesting. So, I'm going to go and give my rating. I also think this is an S. I think that this card is just busted, easily perspicable, easy to use, um... I just don't see how, I, I also don't see how this just isn't busted. Well, me and you agree, and your chat agrees, so I'll just disagree yeah. with my chat then, because, okay. like I said, A plus, <laughs> A plus S minus, like, not one of the best in the set, but, like, very good or whatever. Like, this is a game-winning card, it's cheap, it's efficient. I mean, this is just a good card, I think. Like, my chat is saying B's and C's now, and I think it's super interesting because, Honestly, I would be very surprised if this is any worse than an A. Like, I don't, I just don't see how this card can be bad. I'm with you. Like I said, S minus, <clears throat> A plus, good yeah. A. Like, let's see, guys. We'll see who's right. Okay, next card here, Cauldron's Gift. I like all these Cauldron themed cards. Five mana sorcery, uncommon. Uh, as adamant, if at least three black mana was spent to cast a spell, put the top four cards of your library into the graveyard. Okay, so you mill yourself. Uh, you may choose a creature card in your graveyard. If you do, return it to the battlefield with an additional plus one, plus one counter on it. Okay, so this re re this uh, returns a creature. It's like a raised dead, basically. One, raised dead, counter. get a plus one, plus one counter. And you get to mill and with a mill clause to find it. it. Yeah. Um, C, it's a playable card for five mana. It's not exciting. I don't know. What rating would you give it? Like a low C, high, like, like a D maybe? Yeah. Low C? Yeah. I mean, I, I just said C. Um, oh, uh, okay. Yeah. I, I would just give this like a C, um, maybe C minus, not a D. I think you'll usually put this in your deck unless you have better five drops. Um, mm -hmm. Because, I mean, you do mill four cards, which means you're going to put a creature in your yard when you don't have one, and it does get back your best creature. And plus one, plus one changes a creature by a lot, right? Like, that's an important little clause. Yeah, that's like, true. you know, like, if you have to return a 3-3 three, three as a 3-3, three, three, you're a lot, like, less happy than if it's a 4-4. Four, four. If you return, like, a 2-2 two, two or 3-3 three, yeah. three flyer and you get plus one, plus one to a flyer, that's a big deal. Uh, so I, I see this as, like, a CC minus. Not a D. I think that you will only cut this when you have multiple better fives. Like, I think this is a card you're going to put in your deck. But I'm going to go, like, CC minus. Yeah, I see some people saying that, well, you can use an adamant effect when you don't have any creatures in the bin, but is that the life you want to live? <laughs> like, you really just want to just, like, you know, just a shot in the dark, five mana, mill yourself, and hope that you get something good? It's not the life terrible. you want to live, but if you have no other options, it might be the life you're going to live. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, we'll see about this. Cool cool card, though. Uh, like, just adding the, the like, admin and stuff, it really changes, like, the, like, the feeling of the card, for sure. Okay, next card here, Clack Bridge Troll. Five mana, it's double black. Uh, creature type Troll. At a rare, and it's an 8-8. Eight, eight. Okay, so let's see what the downsides are. Trample and Haste. Okay, those are not downsides. When Clocking Patrol enters a battlefield, target opponent gains three zero one white goat creature tokens. Okay. At the beginning of combat on your turn, any opponent may sacrifice a creature. If a player does, tap Clack Bridge Troll. You gain three life, and you draw a card. Okay. It's another incredibly complex card that's hard to evaluate. It's clearly good. If your opponent's tapped and you play this, I mean, you give them their goats, they sack one, you just got a card in three life immediately. <laughs> so even if they kill it, you're now up a card and they've got a couple goats. Uh, I'm going to go S minus A plus again. Um, okay. It's a really powerful card. But five mana to gain three life and draw a card is pretty bad. That's not impacting the card that the board that well. By the next turn, you've now gained six and drawn two cards. I think without the gain life clause, this card might not even be good. 
But the gain life clause is a big deal because if they can't kill you and you're drawing extra cards every turn, then it's really good. So I'm going to go like A plus, A, solid A, not an S, uh, not an S minus. I'm, I'm, I'm getting too loose with my S's. Even that, I'm not sure. I mean, it is powerful. It is powerful. Even that cauldron probably should be like an A, A plus, but I probably shouldn't throw out S minus. Uh, it is powerful. Uh, I think this is a first pick, but I like. I don't think it's off our rating scale where we need to give it an S. But maybe. I mean, it is really hard to kill someone if they're gaining three life a turn. So I'm gonna go like A plus. That's gonna be my rating. Yeah, I mean, this card, and I definitely agree with you, if it didn't have the gain life, and it didn't have the draw card, if it only had one of each of these, it's definitely not as good. But both those together is very backbreaking, right? Because it's like, it's like, uh, it, it's like, one of the weaknesses of, of this card that is that it, it can't block, but then you're gaining some life to mitigate that, and then... And then, and then, if you're drawing cards, then that's then that's just great as well at that point in the game. So, this card is very good for me. And again, it does leave your opponent options, but honestly, their 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 options aren't that good. So, I I think I'm also gonna give this a high A. I don't think it's quite S there either, but I can see this being an S. Obviously. Yeah, no, I mean, it's clearly a powerful card. Like, I think I'm happy to first pick this. Yeah. But how game breaking is it? Is right. the question. That, that's the tough part. Is it an A is it an A plus? Is it an S minus? Is it an S like I mean it's not an S plus, like it's not Mythic Chandra from M twenty. Exactly. But is it an S minus? Is it an A plus? It's hard to evaluate. But I, I I'm happy to first pick this card. It looks like a good card. Despite being very complex, so harder to evaluate by nature. I think it's a I think it's definitely a powerful card. Yeah. I think that everybody agrees at the it's at least an A, but we, but we disagree whether or not it's like like just exactly how good it is. Like, it, is it like A plus? Is it S minus? Is it S plus? Because some people think it's like one of the best rares in the format, and I'm not sure if that's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, okay. we we agree. A plus, S minus, hard to evaluate. Yeah, exactly. All right, epic downfall, two mana sorcery at uncommon. Exile target creature with converted mana cost three or greater. Okay. This was one of my preview cards. Thank you again, Wizards Ooh. of the Coast. Um, clearly, it's great efficient removal. Um, this is what you want out of your removal. You want to be able to deal with their good cards, not their <laughs> bad cards. So I'll give this an A. It's not broken. It can't, be, it can't be an S, but it, it could be yeah, like it, it could be a B or an A, I think. I don't know. Yeah, it's, it, it, it's very interesting. I mean, it's much better than D-Spark. And obviously, again, I don't, I don't, think, it's, I don't think it's very... Uh, valuable i guess or it's not completely valuable to compare cards from different sets but um this card is a sorcery it is one mana lower than that which is a huge deal because well like most cards in limited are like the cards that you actually care about are three are three mana and above so i i definitely can see it um Exactly how good it is. I think it's like I don't, I don't know. For me, it's like a like like a B plus, like a high B. Like you, I think I'm gonna give this a B. You remember earlier when we were talking about like, well, where does the advantage come from removal? Like, and it's like, uh -huh. well, how many mana is it trading up? I mean, this kills their six drop. You know, this kills their five. Yeah, drop. that's true. I mean, obviously. I mean, even killing their three drop, it gives you s some potential of swinging the board as well. Yeah, and like obviously, like you know, if you lose to their two drop with this in your hand, you feel bad. But I mean, like, but it's not gonna happen often, yeah, it's right? not going to happen often. Like two drops generally aren't stuff you're looking to kill that badly. I think it's a big difference between this and D spark in that um, four and three is just a world apart. I mean, people play a yeah, lot of three drops in their draft decks, right? Like if your average yeah. draft deck has like 15, 16 creatures, how many of them cost exactly three mana, five, six of the, of the 16. It's a very common, heavily played casting cost. So the fact that D spark might hit like, five of your opponent's 16 creatures and this card might hit 10 of your opponent's 16 creatures yeah. is, a, is worlds apart so i i think it's an a 10, but uh you know we'll see 12 even yeah yeah like what's the minimum number of two drops or early game do you usually try to run a limited like usually for me the number four like yeah I'm, four is I'm... four is the minimum i agree yeah uh, so then if you have yeah if if you have 16 creatures then you're hitting like 12 of those i, I think i'm i think I think I'm convinced. I think it's like a low A or high B. Uh, yeah, 
definitely very powerful and you will be upset when your opponent plays this and you'll be like man how do yeah. they have the epic down like i'm not saying it's broken like it's not a borderline s but i have yeah, this exactly. as like a solid a like i'm ha i'm gonna be happy to first pick this if i'm black like if i open this and i'm if it's pack two and i have a black deck and i open this i'm gonna be like cool i got a good first <clears> pick like this is just a solid a in my opinion that's true and, and, and also exiles as well which i guess might be worse if you care about cards in their graveyard but i mean overall it should be better Okay, next card here, Eye Collector. Wow, that's very uh, that's very dark. Uh, one mana, one one, fairy at common, flying. Whenever Eye Collector deals combat damage to a player, each player puts their top card of their library into their graveyard. Um, I mean, if you really want that effect, but it seems like there's a lot of flying in this format, so I don't think this is a card you're gonna play. Like, I'll give it a D. Yeah, like a low D even. Yeah, same for me. Okay, next card here, Fasty Funeral. Five mana, instant speed, common. Target creature gets minus X, minus X until end of turn, where X is a number of cards in your own graveyard. So, I mean, this is a card that's going to vary a lot. If you're blue-black and you're self-milling, I mean, this is just good removal. Uh, if you're relying on, you know, your trades on turn five, you might have one, two cards in your graveyard. Um, so it's pretty bad. Give it, like... But I think you're going to be putting cards in your own yard, and I think that's something you're going to be trying to do in this format. So, like, a C, C-. minus. I mean, it seems like a lot of these blue decks care about putting cards in your opponent's graveyard more than your own. I mean, obviously you're trading off with stuff, but uh, I don't know. It's like, one of the cool things about Deadly Visit and those and those five minute removal spells, even at sorcery speed, is just like, well, you're, you know, you, you're just like, okay, well, I just need to survive until turn five, and then I can take like the biggest thing off the board, and then maybe, and then maybe I can win from there. Here, it's like, okay, well, you hit turn five, and then you're like, oh my gosh, <laughs> like I can kill their two drop or something. Yeah, oh. yeah, maybe it's more like a D plus than a C minus. I mean, don't get me wrong. In most formats, in most black decks, this would be like a D to an F. But like I said, yeah. I think you're supposed to be putting cards in your yard. Your opponent may be milling you to enable cards they have. True. So, I mean, you know, I see this as like a C, C minus in this format. But uh, I think in most formats, this might even be an F. But I'm guessing, yeah. I, and I'm guessing, I'm totally speculating on the way this format's going to play out. Literally, I've seen about half the cards in Throne of Eldraine at this point. But uh, I'm Not guessing. Not even, yeah. Yeah, but I'm guessing in this format, it's going to be more like a C than an F but it could okay. be totally unplayable. Yeah, I mean, I'll be happy if this card is better than looks. I think I'm going to give it a D, but I think we're both thinking the same thing. So, like, somewhere there, like high D, uh, low C, something like that. Okay. Foreboding Fruits. Three mana sorcery, common. Target player draws two cards and loses two life. Adamant, at least three black mana with spent to cast this spell, create a food token. C. Solid playable, like, not good. Like a high C, just a solid C. Just a solid C. Um, seems like it could be like a pretty grindy format, not that aggressive, in which case it's a draw yeah. two. And then, I mean, you gain one life if you can spend all that mana. I mean, the artifact, you know, you're going to do things with that sometimes. Um, yeah, I, I would call this like a, a total C. Like, it's a fifth pick. It's going to make your deck. I mean, obviously not in multiples like you know you're not gonna play six of this card yeah. but uh but I, I think you know i'm happy to have two of these in most acts probably depends how the format plays but i think this is almost like the definition of a c in my opinion yeah i mean obviously sometimes you can like bolt someone or like shock someone in the face <laughs> and then they die but uh but that's not gonna get that's not gonna come up often i also think this is a c as well as real dimension returns um there seems to be better card draw, at least in blue. And uh, this is just a card that, I don't know, like, it's a card that you're not supposed to pick highly. It's a card that you pick on the wheel. It doesn't always make your deck, so. I think, uh, yeah, I think it's C. I mean, like, it doesn't always make your deck if you have other better options, but, well, like, the, the first copy is fine. Second copy is, it's like. It's also going to depend on yeah. how valuable the food tokens are, which, again, is hard to evaluate. Yeah, and whether or not you can spend the three black on this as well. Because maybe, 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 maybe you double spell and right, and like maybe you don't have four black. Like, I don't know, there's a lot of problems that comes with the adamant aspect of it, I suppose. Okay, here is all right, 
All right, all right, all right. This is my favorite card of the of the set. Okay, uh, forever young, two mana sorcery, common. Put any number of target creature cards from your graveyard on top of your library and draw a card. And I assume that you can put uh, the cards, like the creatures, in whatever order you want on top. So. So why is this your favorite card in the format? Because it's a card that is clear the mind ask. Obviously, it's creatures. But I think that it's fine to run creatures and stuff, especially if you have cards like this. Then, then, uh, then you want to find ways to like, to like basically uh, deck out deck out less. Uh, I don't know if there's any sort of like recursion, for instance, sorceries and stuff like that. But this is like one of the pieces that I'm looking for for uh, creating 50 minutes to 60 minute games of uh, best of one limited. So uh, I think I think this card's super cool. I love the artwork as well. This is. Obviously, it's only creatures, but I love the flavor of the card, and I love what it does, and I love the potential of it. So, Yeah, I mean, I think it's a cool card. So it's basically just a two-mana raise dead if you're getting one creature, right? Put a card on top and, yeah. then, and then draw it is the same thing as put it in your hand, right? Yep, I mean, exactly. I mean, it triggers the uh, the blue things that, that require <laughs> you to have played uh, drawn two cards in one turn. You still are drawing a card for your turn and then drawing a card when you play this, so that's a little bit upside. But, of course, in the mid to late game, I mean, lands are almost dead draws. You, you'll stack your deck with as many creatures as you can. And if your opponent's mm -hmm. trying to mill you out, you could play this towards the end of the game and put 12 creatures from your graveyard back on top of your deck. So uh, I think it's got a decent amount of upside. Um, probably a little worse than a Soul Salvage. Uh, substantially better than, like, a Raised Dead. Like, bring, bring back one creature. I'll give it, like, a C. Like, maybe a C+. Plus. Yeah, chat, chat's actually right. Uh, Kelverman says if you have if you have that many scams, and by scams he means creatures, you accidentally kill your opponent. I mean, I can just not attack. It's okay. Yeah, but uh, I like it. I mean, I I I want to give this the honorary S here, <laughs> but uh, realistically, I think I'm gonna give it a B. And I do agree that that's high. Like it's definitely like a C, but um, very very sweet card. And honestly, I should just give it an F so people don't pick it. And then the bots on picket, <laughs> and then I'll just wheel all the Forever Youngs. It's fine. I mean, and then actually you, stay Forever Youngs. Do you want all the Forever Youngs? Because even if you really like the card, it's clearly not a card That's you true. want a lot of, right? Are you gonna play six copies of this card in your deck? Like you're gonna have four Forever Youngs in your hand? <laughs> like, you, I mean, I think it's a C. I think it's a solid card to put one of in your deck. Uh, maybe yeah. you'll put two in some decks, but uh, I don't think you're looking for a ton of them in any deck. So I mean. Pretty solid C. I mean, opinion. if you play six of them, you basically become Benjamin Button, right? Just like, wait, hold on. Benjamin Button? Yeah. Yeah, Benjamin Button. There we go. All right. Next card here, Foul Mire Knight. One mana, zombie knight at uncommon. One, one death touch. And it, it, it has an adventure. Instant speed, profane insight. Three mana, you draw a card and you lose one life. So I want to point out before we move on that Renshank in my chat uh, did point out that it, it does have the floor of two mana draw card in the sense that one of the worst situations with Soul Salvage Raised Deads is when you just don't have dead creatures. Yeah, you can't do anything. And also, yeah. like, let's say you have a two land hand, you can just play this card on turn two to draw a card, to cycle it effectively, right? It, like, two mana... Oh, does it say up to? Yeah, any number. Oh, any number. Right. Oh, so, so, yeah. So that, that does raise it a little bit, and I didn't think of that either. Uh, I want to give Renshank credit for that, because, you know, it's a pretty solid upside when you just have a two-land hand you keep, because, you know, it's a fine hand, and then on you haven't drawn a land in your first draw step or two. On turn two, you can just pay two when you have nothing else to do and cycle that card. So... I'm going to amend my rating uh, from a solid C to more like a C plus B minus because of that like split card where you can basically just cycle it whenever you drew exactly True. two lands or when you don't have any dead creatures or anything like that. I'm going to amend my rating to more like, a B, more like a B minus C plus than a solid C because of that split card ability because you don't have to have a target creature to put on top. All right, no. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Um, one last thing I'll say about this card, Forever Young, is that I will be at TwitchCon. There will be a pre-release events there as well. If anyone want, if anyone's there and wants to get their Forever Young signed by me, I'm up for it. Just find me. Let me know. <laughs> oh, I love that card, man. Okay. Okay. Again, fa uh, fa fa Falmar Knight, one mana, one one death touch, and it has the instant speed adventure. Three mana, draw a card, and you lose one life. All right, so you play this card uh, for three mana, you get a card, and then you pay one, and you get a 1-1 one -one death touch. So effectively, we're looking at 
four mana, uh, one one death touch draw card. That's yeah, pretty reasonable. I'll give this a C. Reasonable. Huh. <laughs> It's, it, 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 I mean, it's I, like again, it's so cool because you because you can play it on one, you play it on turn two, you can even play it on turn three if your opponent's like really killing you, or you can wait, and you, and you basically cycle it and then you play the death toucher later, which uh, which oftentimes like the death touchers are better later anyways because uh, death touch scales with the game with like bigger creatures, assuming that they don't have flying, but uh, the. Yeah, but like compared to like a two two, like a two two will always just trade off with a two two or maybe like a three two, maybe a four two at best. But then a death touch just trades into anything. So this card is like really sweet in the late game as well as uh, the early game. What do you think here? Oh, I mean, I, I was giving it a C, uh, maybe more of a C plus, but I can't go a B. Um, I mean, losing a life is still a cost uh, to draw a card. That's a one mana one with death touch isn't always good. It's it's okay. Like it could be a pretty bad play on turn one if you don't get an extra card. Sometimes, <laughs> I I like I liked it in the late game. You kind of get a free death touch a uh, one one because you assuming you you know mm -hmm. you have infinite mana you can go ahead and draw a card and then get it. So I mean like you know C plus maybe, but I don't know. I, I maybe maybe it's more like a B minus. It's hard to evaluate these cards, but. I don't know, C plus, B minus. It's like, I mean, it's a good card. You're almost never going to cut this from a deck, I don't think. But I also yeah. don't, I don't think you'll be happy to take this with an early pick. Like, you want to be, you want to be first and second picking, like, you know, power cards. You want to be, you know, taking, like, bacon to pie second with your second pick. Yeah, that's true. Like, I don't think this card compares to bacon to pie. I know I gave bacon to pie an A, so this could still be yeah. a B. But, <laughs> uh, but, I mean, I don't know, B, B minus, C plus range for me. Yeah, I think I I think I agree with that evaluation as well. I think for me as like a as like a low B, I think that it it's weird. It's a card that is good, but I think it I think it looks better than it is. Um it's a card that you'll play that you'll never cut from your black deck, I don't think, but you also like don't really want to pick this over other stuff. It's just a least it, it's just a less important like part of a limited deck, I feel, than other cards. But uh, yeah, I think for me it's gonna be a B minus. Cool card though. Okay. Ooh, speaking of cool cards, Giant Skewer, two mana, one of so one colorless, one black. Artifact equipment at common. Equipped creature gets plus two plus one. Whenever a equipped creature deals combat damage to a creature, create a food token. And uh, the normal equip cost for this is uh. Three mana, so there's actually no way to cheat this onto a creature. You just have to pay the full cost for it. So two mana and then three mana. So this is kind of expensive, but if you can do things besides gain life with food tokens, you're going up a resource. So I think this card is going to depend greatly on how much you want food tokens. I'd already, I've already seen a lot more food in black than I did in white and blue. So I'd already like to amend my rating of that five mana three three flyer up to like more like a B to or an A because it seems like it's not that hard to make food if you're uh, if you're black and uh, that card is potentially very powerful. Um, so I'm guessing that food is going to be something that black red and green are trying to do, and uh, this card is going to be good if you can use the food tokens. So I'll give this a B. Wow, that's really interesting. So for me, it's whenever. So the so the caveat here is whenever it deals combat damage to a creature, create a food token. So it's like, it's kind of oh, hard to like. Oh, I completely missed that. I thought it was whenever it dealt damage to a player, not not uh -huh, a creature. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. I apologize. So it, yeah, I complete. I I thought like, oh, okay, they don't have a blocker or a profitable blocker for your attacker. You slap this down, you connect, you get a food token. I, I didn't realize it was when a creature deals combat damage to a creature. Uh, my mistake. Cause, no, I... cause, because it really is that much more difficult, right? To like make sure that creatures connect with one another. It's like it's not Hearthstone or Shadowverse where you can attack the creatures yourself. Like they need to choose a block or you need to choose a block. It's very hard to line that all up. And it's not like the like the equip cost is even cheap, right? Like you like you can't move it around at will to prevent them from blocking. Like you attack in and then they don't want to block and you re equip it. It's it's three man to equip, so 
No, I'm I, I like I said, I just didn't even like I misread it. I I, uh, I thought it was when a clip creature deals combat damage to a player, not a creature. Um yeah. That is no, a cool card though. Yeah. Uh, definitely more of a like a D plus C minus. Um you know, you might play it. Like you might play this in some decks that want food and like where you want something grindy that you can move around, but hmm. but yeah, I uh, I definitely it's hard to get food tokens out of this, not easy. I thought it was gonna be easy to get food tokens out of this. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, I would like to amend that rating to more like a C minus than uh, than anything higher than that. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go ahead and give this a D. I think that again, it is a cool card, but the buff isn't that big. The upside is like, it depends on synergy and stuff. Like you're not gonna be happy if you just make food tokens and stack them for life kind of thing. And then uh, the equip cost is very expensive for what that is. So, but I think we're both thinking the same thing. Like yeah. Yeah, okay for grindy, but it's hard to get food out of it. So D, D plus, C minus, like uh, not not a great card. Uh, I don't know why it's when it does damage to a creature. It's probably <laughs> it's probably flavor reasons. Uh, if this was when it dealt damage to a player, it would be a sweet, interesting card. Um, as is, it's pretty bad. Yeah. Okay, next card here. Oh, I haven't seen this. Last of Thorns, one mana instant at common. Target creature gains uh, gets plus. Two plus one and gains death touch until end of turn. Uh, it's a fine combat trick. Um, I don't know how much uh, limit this limited format's going to revolve around like creatures blocking each other in the early game. With only one toughness being raised, you're often going to lose that creature still. So then you're kind of getting two for one. Yeah. Give it like a so C basically minus. So basically, it's worse than Blade Brand, right? Like if it's if it's like giving it death touch already. And not that much toughness, then it's just gonna, it's likely just gonna die. So, yeah. But I mean, I do like Blade Brand a lot. But yeah, D plus, C minus, like maybe you'll play one of it as a trick. Uh, maybe you won't, depending on what your deck is trying to do. Not a very good card. Yeah. I, I think it's gonna be a D for me. I'll be very, uh, I'll be very surprised if I play this that often. Locked Wayne Paladin, four mana, human knight at common. It's a three, two with menace. Adamant, at least three black mana was spent to cast this card. Uh, sorry, cast a spell. Locked Wayne Paladin enters a battlefield with a plus one, plus one counter. Um, so it's a three, two menace for four, not three this time. <laughs> and then it's a four, three if you paid three black. Um, it's going to be like another CC minus for me. A 4-3 yep. Menace is a pretty good card. A 4-3-2 Menace is not a very good card. Um, just depends how much black mana you have. But I'll go like C, C-. minus. Yeah, I I think it'll be a C- minus for me. And uh, if I, again, if you're mainly black, it's going to go up in value. But uh, nothing too exciting here. Just It's just a card. It's just a card. Aren't These no. cards don't matter. Yeah. <laughs> Lost Legion. 3-mana, 2-3 Spirit Knight. At common, when it enters the battlefield, scry two. I'll say this: I don't think this card is good. I don't think it's bad. I think it's another CC minus. But I love that they're just throwing scry on just a generically costed creature now. Scry makes yeah. magic good. Like scry is everything good in mm -hmm. magic. So uh, you know, three mana, two three, a little difficult to cast. This is not an exciting card, but it is a knight, and it does have scry two. So I'll just give it a CC minus. Okay. Again, I'm at this point. I'm just. Um... I'm just saving up like topics for a podcast, but uh, okay. The value, or actually the perceived value of scry. Do you feel better when you scry something to the bottom and top deck it, or do you, or do you feel the same as if you had the card that you wanted on top, but you wasted the scry? I don't. I try. Not like to... if the result is completely the same, you know what I mean. Like the yeah. like the result is completely the same. I try not to even think like that. I just think like how much value is there in scrying. Like in the late game, there's a lot of value anytime you scry a land to the bottom. It's just basically draw a card on a delay if the land was dead. In the early game, like if you play this on turn three and your hand is good, and you just have like one more land and a four drop, there's not much value in scry or whatever. Like, you know, you may you want to draw like one more land, two more lands. So if you scry a land to the bottom, there's not that much value. Um I mean, so I don't think this is a very good card, but I definitely think it's playable. Yeah. Uh, so, like, that's why I said, for me, it's a CC minus. Uh, I try not to, I don't know, feel good or bad about when I hit <laughs> don't hit. 
Uh, you know, emotions, you know, they, they have their place in life, but not in the middle of games of magic. They just kind of lead you astray. Okay. But That's true. Uh, wise words. All right. Yeah. I also think this is a C. I think it's, uh, it's like good filler it, or, or it's like a, just like a good solid playable. Not, nothing too exciting. If you need a cut, it's fine to cut it, but you'll almost always play it. Um, and for the record, I I agree with chat. I like bottoming the card and then top decking it. <laughs> I feel like I wasted value when I topped it. Okay, next card here. Malevolent Noble, two mana, two two human noble at common. You can pay two mana, and this is not a sacrifice ability. Sacrifice an artifact or another creature. Put a plus one plus one counter on male on Malevolent Noble. Another C for me. I mean, this is a solid card. Uh, it's a two mana two two with some upside. It just seems like I mean maybe more like a C plus. I like that it's a serviceable two drop that'll be a little bit hard to blank, but it's not like yeah. you just have things lying around to sack left and right, even in the food uh -huh. token format. So give it like a C plus. This day and age that there's like less cards that just sack stuff for free, like cartel aristocrat kind of cards. Like it feels like it, it feels like it feels like a lot of the cards to sack stuff are like you have to pay for something, so it makes car like other cards like combos like active treason and stuff a little bit worse. Um, oh yeah, and you can also sacrifice food for this food of this. I mean, I just think it's interesting that there's no like free sacking stuff anymore, but but uh, I but I guess for good reason. Like sacrificing stuff, it like for no cost is pretty broken. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I'm sure that's, like, a problem for Constructed or something like that. Uh, I don't really know, but just evaluating this card, it's a fine 2-mana two 2-2 two -two with some upside. It'll be able to attack in some spots where a 2-mana two 2-2 two -two wouldn't. Yep. Uh, like I said, C, C+. Yep. Plus. I mean, I can't give this a B. Like, I won't be happy if I second pick this. Um, but I think it's very rarely going to get cut. I think this is a uh, very solid playable 2-drop, so I'm going to give this, like, a C, C+. Plus. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Like it is it it is a bear with a with a very real upside, so I agree with that. Ooh, I haven't seen this one either. Memory theft. Three mana sorcery at common. Target opponent reveals her hand. You may choose oh, oh no, you choose a non-land card from it. That player discards that card. You may put that card Oh, you may put a card that has an adventure that player owns from exile into the graveyard. Oh, so you reveal their hand, you choose you choose a non-land card to discard, and then if they have an adventure card in exile, you can bin it so that they can't play the creature. Pretty neat. It's pretty neat, but three mana discard a card is pretty bad. I mean, there are a lot of adventures, <clears throat> um, but I still don't think you're going to generally want to play this card, so I'm going to give it like a D, D+. Plus. Like, it's... You're going to... If you have to start this card, you could do worse, and you're definitely going to board it in some matchups when you see yep. what they have. But I don't think you're happy to main deck this card. I think it's filler, so I think it's a D. Yep. I think happy D for me. It's going to be like one of the last stragglers in a pack that comes around and you basically pick him up for free. Murderous Rider. Three mana. That's one colorless and two black. A zombie Knight. Rare. It is a 2-3 lifelink. When Murderous Rider dies, put it on the bottom of its owner's library and also has an adventure on it as well. Swift I mean, End, three mana. This card Instant, is destroyed target creature. Yeah, this or card. Planeswalker, you lose your life. This card yeah. is great. Uh, I mean, it's an A plus, S minus. It's not super duper broken, board dominating, but this is like very efficient removal. And it's murder, but it costs you two life. And then you also get a two three. So I mean, you know, this is an S probably, not even an A, yeah. but it's not like one of the better S's or whatever. I think so as well. Like it, I don't know. It's just so much value on a single card. Yeah, I think I'm. I think I'm happy with like a low S for this one. It's a card that is. I don't know. It's just. It's just fantastic. I mean, if S, yeah. I mean, like I said, it's the rating scale. If S is mythic Chandra type stuff, then it's not an S. But I mm -hmm. mean, if the, but if A is also like murder, this is a lot better than murder. I mean, exactly. You'll gladly pay. You would pay two life on your murders to then get a <clears> two-three <throat> life link that then goes back into your deck. When, I mean, so, I mean, it, it's an A plus S minus. Certainly not one of the more broken cards as far as S's are going to go. But I, I don't know. I think I'm comfortable giving this like an S. Yes, uh, same here. So, so just to clarify a little bit uh, for people in chat is that that's basically what 
like the way that I look at rating, I'm a rating system as well. I know a lot of people want S to only be like game winning bombs, but the thing is that winning games comes a lot of different forms. So it's like a lot of cards like this. Yes, it literally doesn't literally reduce their health to zero and win you the game, but it's it it's a big step towards that. So I think that this card, the value is much higher than an A. So I'm happy with a low S for this. Okay, next card here, Oathsworn Knights. Three mana, that's one colorless and two black. Human Knight at rare, it's a zero, zero. However, it enters a battlefield with four plus one plus one counters. It attacks each combat if able. If damage will be dealt to it while it has a counter on it, prevent the damage or remove a counter. I mean, it's another card that's clearly very good. Um, I think it's a little worse than that last card, and that last card was very borderline for its S minus, so I'll give this yeah. one an A plus. Yeah, I think I'm happy with an A for this. It's just, I mean, it's just a, it's, it's just a thing. It's the thing that's just good. Just play it. I mean, if you play that on turn three, it's a four four. That like yeah. they, they can't trade a four four four. You like it's just a four. I mean, what are they gonna do? Like it, I don't know. Like that card is quite good. More, it might be very oppressive, actually. Like know. it's an A, not an S. The the other one I think is more of an S than that one. But I mean, like a solid A. Yep. In my opinion. Oh, you got a Triumph sub here as well. Oh, thanks, uh, TTG Crazy Time. Appreciate the uh, subscription. Welcome. Okay, next card here. Order of the Midnight, two mana, two, two. Human Knight at Uncommon. It has flying, but it cannot block. Now, it also has an adventure. Sorcery speed, alter fate. Two mana, return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Yeah, I mean, this card is quite good. This is an A. Um, it's not as good as the uh, destroy creature, two, 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 three lifelink. But buy back a creature and then get a 2-2 flyer. Or if you just want to curve out, 2-mana 2-2 flyer, can't block. Like, this is an A. I think it's like a low A for me, like high B. Um, but, yeah, I mean, what more do you want from a card, especially in Limited? That's just exactly what you want. Like, cards that do stuff later, cards that do stuff on curve, fantastic. Yeah, I really like the fact that it's not just a Grave Digger, that you can just play that on turn two. I mean, a 2-mana two 2-2 two flyer when you're on the play on turn two is very scary for a lot of decks. So yep. I, I think that card is going to be underrated by people. I don't think they're going to realize how good of a split card that really is. Yeah, true. I mean, I mean a lot of times, like, you play Kitesel Corsair, right? That's a card that technically doesn't block because, I don't know, like, you're just always attacking with it in Exelon, and it, 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 ends, it, it, it ends games very, very quickly. Okay, next card here, Piper of the Swarm. Two mana, Human Warlock at rare. It's a 1-3. Rats you control have Menace. Two mana to tap, create a 1-1 one, one black rat creature token. Four mana, tap, sacrifice three rats, gain control of target creature. Uh, I mean, another card that's clearly very good. Um, I mean, it's a little slow before you can steal a creature, but, I mean, stealing creatures in limited is incredible. Uh, I don't think Rats having Menace matters much, but, I mean, I like this card. I um, guess I'll give it an A. I mean, I don't think it's an S, but I think it's like an AA+. Plus. I mean, it's pretty close to an S, right? If it's not an S. Yeah, um, I mean, it's, it's broken over a long, slow game. You yeah. do have to activate it a lot of times before you're stealing a creature. I don't, I don't think it's an S. Uh, I mean, it's going to die to removal. It takes a long time before it does anything busted. It can win a game, and it's a fine rate just to put it out on turn two. So, I mean, for me, this is a solid A, but I don't have this as close to an S. I have this as just, like, a dead solid A. Man, this card is... I mean, this card seems very frustrating frustrating to play against, right? I mean, it's going to be better versus control than it is against aggro, unless they have all X1s and stuff, but... Like, I think the two mana raise dead we just looked at, like, I think that card's probably better than this, but I think both cards are excellent. I really think people are going to underrate the ability to just put that thing out as a 2-2 flyer on turn two when you're filling out. Like, a two, when you're on the play against, like, whatever deck, a 2-mana two 2-2 two, two flyer, like, you're hitting for two a turn starting on turn three. Like, you still play the rest of the game. Like, that's an awesome thing to do is put out a 2-2 two, two flyer on turn two on the play. So, I mean, I, I think that this is an A. That's an A+, plus in my opinion. But I, I think it's pretty close. Yeah, I definitely can see that. And... I, I, and who knows? Like this might be like the format might be slow enough where this card is just ridiculous. But uh, I'm happy with an A, like a high A. Okay, 
Ooh, look at this card. I don't know if you've seen this card. Rankle, Master of Pranks. Four mana, double black. Um, so that's two colorless, black. Legendary Creature, Fairy Rogue, and Mythic. Flying Haste, at 3 3. Whenever Rankle, Master of Pranks, deals combat damage to a player, choose any number. I have one. From the following. Sorry, Each go player ahead. discards a card. Each player loses one life and draws a card. Uh, and each player sacrifices a creature. So. This card is a joke. It's a 4-mana 3-3 flyer, and you just get whatever effect you need. Like, I know it's symmetrical, but, like, if if you have lands to discard, you're just going to make both players discard a card. If they have a one good creature out and you have some small creature out, you're just going to each player sacks a creature. I mean, this card is a joke. This is an ass. This is just a yeah, total and complete ass. It's a 4-mana 3-3 flying haste with a bunch of... with a really good upside. I mean, this is an ass, period. Like... This is I would ban it from limited. Like this is a joke. <laughs> How does the second ability work? So each player loses life and draw a card. Does that always come after the discard effect? Like does that go in order? Assuming you pick both. I mean, this is just ridiculous. You get to choose all of these. <laughs> Ben's upset. Just I mean, it's not choose one. It's choose any number. Like, are you serious, <laughs> wizards? Like, why? I mean, I know this is designed for constructed because it's a mythic. And maybe, like, for Constructed, it needs all of that. But come on. I don't want to play against this for the next three months. <laughs> and it's not only that, because we're, be, because if you can't deal with it already, you, it gets to connect again, and then you, and then it does the same thing next turn as well. It's very... Yeah, it's, it's very insane. I definitely agree with the S, <laughs> and it might even be one of the best rares in the set. Oh, yeah, it's definitely in contention. I have no idea whether it's number one or number four or whatever, but this is on my ban from limited list. This is just a stupid card. <laughs> okay, I like it. I like it. Okay. Oh, I haven't seen this card either. Reaper of the Night. Seven mana. Creature Specter. It is a common. It's a four or five. Whenever it attacks, if defender player has two or fewer cards in hand, it gains flying. Whoa, that's so cool. Harvest Fear. Four mana sorcery. And this is its adventure cost. Target opponent discards two cards. It's a common. I mean, this is a good card. Um, four mana discard two isn't a good rate. But the fact that you get a four or five is a pretty big deal. I think what a lot of people might not realize about discard, the biggest problem with discard and limited is it's just dead from turn six or seven on. But a four or five flyer, or a four or five, even if it doesn't have flying, is far from dead. That's just a very reasonable card in the late game. So, I mean, this is like a B, like a B plus... I mean, it's not an A, like, I don't think you want to... I don't think this is something you're hoping to first pick. But, I mean, I'll take this card third pick if I'm black. Yeah, I mean, what ranking do we give it? I mean, it's expensive, obviously, but, it, like, at common? So, sometimes in my control decks, I find it a hard time to, like, find a finisher. You know what I mean? And this card is just... I don't know, this card's, like, everything you want. And this is a fine card to pick up a common. It's a card that you probably get late. Yeah. Uh, not many people can run many of them, so I don't see why people are going to pick them that often. It's like, car level wise, it's very high. It was like a B. Yeah, very solid B in my opinion. Like, uh, like I said, B, B plus, probably more just like solid B. But I mean, this is like, this is a very solid card to take third pick. I think. I think this is going to be my new profile picture on Skype. Yeah, that's fantastic. All right. Whew. Next card here. Reeve Soul. So this is kind of similar to your other card. Uh, two mana, sorcery, common, destroy target creature, power three or less. Oh, well, I guess it's the opposite. So ironically, they actually gave me this card too. They gave me two previews, oh. the, both, both of the two removal spells. Um, this card's a lot worse. Uh, I mean, you're a lot more concerned with killing your opponent's best stuff than their cheap stuff. It's still efficient. I mean, you're still going to, most of the time, you're going to pay two mana and kill their three, their three, uh, three drop or even four drop with this card. Uh, so th this card's like a B, whereas the other removal spell was an A. But in my opinion, you know, this is a good card. You know, you'll first pick it out of a weak pack. You'll, I would take Bake into Pie <laughs> over this. So, I mean, you know, this is the second or probably the second or third best black common. You know, like, um, so, I mean, this is a solid B in my opinion. Yeah, solid, yeah, like a solid B. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, what more do you want from a card like that? You know what I mean? So... It's just, uh, yeah, it's just, it's, uh, yeah. Okay, let's move on to the next one here. 
Okay, four mana. Okay, uh, Revenge of Ravens. Four mana enchantment at uncommon. Whenever a creature attacks you or a planeswalker you control, that creature's controller loses one life and you gain one life. Ah. Oh man, is this like the... Like, are we going to have months and months of like discussion on this card? Like, another four mana enchantment that we're also madly in love with? This is just an F, I think. I mean, they can just attack you and like kill you with their big creatures and like their late game. I mean... I don't think this is a playable limited card. It might be sideboard against the right deck in the right matchup or something, but I don't think this is a playable limited card. Whenever a creature attacks you or a planeswalker you control, they lose a life and you gain one life. So it counts for each creature, right? Yeah, but like they don't have to attack with their small creature and then they can block with them. So like <clears throat> they'll just win. If they are going to beat you in the late game, then they can, this card is doing nothing. If uh, if they have a big creature out and a small creature, they can just, like, hold the small creature back and attack with just the big creature. I mean, look, if the opponent's deck was all one-power creatures, then this would basically win you the game. So, I mean, it might have the right matchup, but I don't think I want to put this card in my main deck, like, ever. Oh, man. Attacks? Oh, man. Like, this is definitely a bait, right? I mean, if it's not good, it, like, this is definitely a bait. Huh. Okay, well, I have no idea. I think I'm going to give this a D, because I think that there's potential for this. I know, you, I, I, know no you, I know you want to play with this card. I know you do. Oh, I'm going to stack them. You know that, right? <laughs> like, like, I'm going to post screenshots on Twitter of me having, like, eight Revenge of Ravens out, because obviously no one's picking them, right? Or, like, bots aren't going to pick them. Every single hit deals the eight damage. Yeah. Ooh. Can't it's wait for that. It's a scam, Datsy. It's a scam. <laughs> we'll see how much of a scam it actually is. Next card here, Smitten Swordmaster. Two mana, Human Knight at common. It's a 2-1 lifelink. It also has a, an adventure. One mana, Sorcery. Curry, Favor. You gain X life, and each opponent loses X life, where X is the number of knights you control. I mean, this is a C. A 2-mana, two 2-1 two lifelink knight is going to be playable, not exciting. The front half is also playable, not exciting. This is yeah. a very solid C, in my opinion. Yeah, very solid C. Um, cool, cool card though. Yeah. Maybe I, I mean, it, it, in the right deck, it's gonna be annoying, but yeah, I, I, I definitely agree to see. Specters Shriek, one mana sorcery at uncommon. Target opponent reveals their hand. You may choose a non-land card from it. If you do, that player exiles that card. If a non-black card is exiled this way, exile a card from your own hand. They reveal their hand, you choose a non-land from it, and then they exile it. This if it a... was not black, then you exile one of your own This is cards. an F. This is a constructed cyborg card or something. Don't put this card in your deck in limited. Like a low D and F? I this mean... is this is an F. Like, I mean, yeah. you, 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 I mean, look, you might board it in, and if, you know, because I mean... <sighs> against I mean, a black, like a mono black deck Right, if you play against like mono that. black, then it's a good enough card. But the upside doesn't outweigh the downside of putting this card in your main. Like... If they're mono black, all you did was get like a one mana discard spell that's still dead in the late game, right? Yeah. Like, uh, is it even that good? It's I not. mean, if you knew they were mono black, you would have this card in your deck. If your opponent's playing a heavy black or mono black deck, you're going to board this in. But it's not even like that much upside. So do not put this card in your main deck. This is an F. Like, yeah, I don't see it either. Like, there's a lot of problems with this card. It's just, it's not doing it. All right, next card here, Sir Conrad the Grim. Five mana, legendary creature, it's a human knight, uncommon, it's a 5-4. Now, whenever another creature dies, or a creature card is put into a graveyard from anywhere but the battlefield, so like from their hand, for example, or a creature card leaves your own graveyard, Conrad deals one damage to each opponent. Now, it also has an ability, two mana, each player puts a top card of their library into their graveyard. Huh. Yeah, this is an interesting card. So, I mean, like, clearly it's good. Like, this is a card yeah. you're always going to play. But exactly how good is pretty hard to rate. I mean, there was, like, the four... There there was the Reaper card that, like, discards two cards, and that's a pretty main boardable card. Um, yeah. Dying, it just drains them. I mean, it doesn't really drain, it doesn't heal you, but... And then it has its own ability that puts both top cards of the library into your graveyard. I mean, this does win a stalemate. You can just start milling mm. and then nugging them and a five and a five four is a fine creature not a great mm -hmm. one i'm gonna give this a b i think that this is like a third pick i don't think it's like a first pick but it's a good card i'm just gonna give this a b yeah it's very close 
Hmm. This card seems super obnoxious. I'm not sure. I almost want to give this an A, but it's but but it's somewhere there, like 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 an A minus B plus something like that. Yeah, it's hard to evaluate. I mean, there's, it's there's, hard to evaluate. It's a very complicated card. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Cool. I like it. I like it. Next card here, Tempting Witch. Three mana, human warlock at common. It's a 1-3. When Tempting Witch enters a battlefield, create a food token. Uh, and then you can sacrifice a food for two mana and tap the Tempting Witch. Target player loses three life. I don't think this card's very good. Like, uh, I want to make food tokens, but, I mean, I don't necessarily want to be draining them. Uh, black's not necessarily that aggressive of a color from what I've seen. And, uh, I mean, three mana for one three is really bad. This card feels like it should be, like, a two mana on common. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Like, if this card cost one colorless and a black instead of two colorless and a black, it would be a good card. And it would probably, it would be, like, a cool on common. At three mana, I think this is, like, a D. Like, I don't think this is a good card, really. Yeah, I, I, so I definitely agree with that as well. I think even if you have that flying, like the Bognati, the five mana three three, they sacrifice sacrifice a food to give something minus three minus three. I don't, I don't think you're, you're like you're still unhappy to play Tempting Witch. Yeah, if you have a um, lot of food synergy, you're gonna play it. If you don't, you shouldn't. So I mean, I'm, it's I'm, like, it's a D with upside because of synergy, because it, you know, it it does make food, it does sack food. So if you end up with like a really heavy food deck, maybe you want it. But this is like a D with upside. I mean, even if you have synergies, it's probably still not worth it, right? Like, I, I, I don't know. Yeah, it's pretty bad. This card really should have cost yeah. two mana. Yeah, I, I mean, even two mana at a common, I think it would be like a very reasonable common and not broken even. So we'll see about this one, but I definitely agree with the D. Not very tempting that witch. Okay, next card here, Wicked Guardian. Uh, by the way, we only have three cards left here. Uh, Wicked Guardian, four mana. So that's three colorless and a single black. Human Noble at common. It's a 4-2. When it enters a battlefield, you may have it deal two damage to another creature you control. And if you do, you draw you get to draw a card. It's a pretty interesting card. Another one that's kind of hard to evaluate and is going to vary a lot. I mean, we saw that black has the three mana 2-3 two, knight uh, that scries to. A four mana 4-2 four, draw a card is a nice card. I mean, we saw Rock's Oracle a few years ago, um, M19 or so. And it yeah. was a it was a five mana four two draw card and it was a pretty solid playable nothing special, so I mean, I, I guess this card makes yeah. you not really mind playing like that witch like the like like the witch you like Play the, it on like curve. the three mana one three yeah, yeah on curve. I mean, I'm gonna give this a less bad. I'm gonna give this a C. I mean, it's a it's a four mana four two that's playable but bad. If you four mana four two draw card is good, so I'm just gonna give this a C. I mean, I think it depends on you know the toughness of your creatures. If you're triggering this on curve all the time, it's quite good. If you're never triggering it, it's quite bad. Uh, it seems like a C to me. Yeah, I think it's a high C, low B for me, but I definitely agree. It's a very cool card. I like it. I like it. I love the design. I've said this a couple times. I'm going to say it one more time tonight since we're about to sign off. I mean, these cards are all interesting. They're decision-oriented. I, I just think, like, hats off to, to Wizards of the Coast, to R&D, to play design for, you know, the, what the cards have been for the past year, year or two. I mean, they're just awesome. They're interesting. They're decision-oriented. I mean, we've really seen a big change in the design of Magic cards, I think, for, for the past two years, from, let's say, the two to three years before that, where it seemed like it was just push the power level. Now it feels like it's, a, it's intricate. It's about decisions. I mean, I, I just think these cards are super sweet. Yeah, fantastic. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what else to say. Like, I think the magic's going in a. I don't even care. Right. I don't even care anymore if I make the MPL next year again or not. <laughs> because if I do, then great. Uh, it's it's an awesome gig. If I don't, then I just get to stay home and draft more and play more limited with these amazing sets. Like, I don't even exactly. want. I don't even want to test for standard. I just want to stay home and play limited. Like, I just want to stay home and draft. <laughs> exactly it's like the best thing about it is that you don't have to play constructed and then you get to be like me where i just play like you know 200 whatever hours of limited a month man whew. <laughs> it's just it's basically a win-win -win scenario the sets yeah. are just so good all i want to do is draft all the time like it's just so fun true and imagine a day if we get to draft together in magic arena like i don't think we'll decide we'll just uh just get pods of friends and stuff and just like draft, maybe draft with viewers and stuff. I don't know. Sounds like a good okay, time to me. Okay, next card. 
Next card here, Wish Claw Talisman. Two mana artifact. It's a rare. Wish Claw Talisman enters the battlefield with uh, three wish counters. One mana tap. Remove a wish counter from the talisman. Search your library for a card. Put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. Now an opponent gains control of Wish Claw Talisman, and you can only activate this ability during your own turn. So you get one more card than them. Like you get two yeah. wishes and they get one. So ultimately yeah. that breaks you even on cards because you spent, you played this card. So like, That's you, true. right. So you get two cards <laughs> to replace Wish Claw Talisman. So you're up a card and they're up a card. So this is a break even on cards, but you got to tutor twice and they only got to tutor once. I think this is kind of like opt, even though this is rare and super complicated. Like if you have busted, busted stuff, then maybe you play this card. Like if I'm if I'm activating this and searching out that four mana fairy that shouldn't exist, then like I'm happy, right? But if I'm searching yeah. out even like a good common removal, what is my opponent searching out, right? And I just invested some mana in this. So I'm gonna get this is a really high variance, really fancy card, but I'm gonna give it yeah. a, I'm gonna give it a C. I'm gonna say you play this if you have busted stuff to go search out and you don't if you don't. But I don't know. It's a really interesting card. Yeah, I think I'm happy with a C rating as well. I think this card is very interesting because I think the thing is that, well, obviously you, you, you don't know what your opponents can get, but the thing is that if your deck is like above average, I think, um, and maybe this card even gets worse, like the higher in wins you are, like on Magic Arena, because you expect your opponent's decks to get better. Um, so maybe it's a weird card where you'll play it until you're like four wins and then you'll sideboard it out or something, or like you'll board it out and then you'll play something else, but... uh. Very a, a very cool card, a card that I'm going to be playing, probably at least in the beginning, just to see how punished we can get. So, I mean, the fact that it like you break even on cards and you spent the mana is an inherent cost, right? But like I said, if the two card you search twice, they search once. So if you have two bombs in your deck, even if they have one, you're now up a bomb. You find both your bombs. So I mean, I think that this is a card that like, you know, if you can search out like a bomb and a bacon to pie for their bomb, or you can search out two bombs, then you'll probably want to put this card in your deck. If not, you probably won't. There's also the synergies, right? Like it's an artifact uh, that has synergies in this format. Maybe you can sack it, right? Maybe you can like, you can stack the ability, right? And then sack it. That's why it's activated on your turn and not activate as a sorcery, I think. Uh, so you yeah. can you can use this with like other cards and stuff. So I, I think this card is like a, a C. Like I think that you're not going to want to put this in every deck, but it's going to be pretty good in some decks with bombs or with sack outlets and whatever. So solid yeah. solid C in my opinion. Even yeah. though it's and even though it's super fancy, it's still just like a like a solid card. Not great, not horrible. Exactly, exactly. And oftentimes, if you're like really winning, you obviously just don't even play it, right? So. But I guess that's already a good situation, so. All right. Seems good. Seems cool. Okay, last card here for the for, for black. Witch's Vengeance. It is three mana. That's one colorless and double black. Sorcery. It's a rare. Creatures of the creature type of your choice get minus three, minus three until end of turn. I mean, this is probably pretty good because you're never going to kill your creatures. And if you ever yeah. hit like two or more of their creatures, then you you pretty much just win. Uh, it's it's a really interesting card as well, and it really depends on the creature type of everything. And I haven't really been paying that much attention aside from knights, because this set isn't really tribal except for like human, non-human, and knights. Yeah. Um, but I mean, like if a lot of the creatures are merfolk, or a lot of the creatures are fairies, or or things like that, which I think they might be because of the uh, flavor and the themes in this format. Even though, the, even though there isn't necessarily, like, fairy lords and merfolk lords, so the creature type doesn't necessarily matter, it seems like they went for, you know, the fairy tale themes, of course. So, see, I think there might be a lot of, of uh, creatures of the same types in this format. And then this card could be a huge blowout, because this is the kind of card where if you kill one of your opponent's creatures, it's meh. If you kill two, it's incredible. So I'm, I'm going to assume this is, like, an A-, minus, maybe, like, an A even, because I think that people are going to have two of the same type out a lot, and you're going to have none of that type out, and you're going to actually really blow people out with this a lot. But it could yeah. be it could be all the way down to like a C or all the way up to like an A plus, depending on the creature types. But I'm going to go like A A minus. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking as well. Because again, the floor of this card is not that bad. Like if you go one for one, obviously 
fantastic. You spend three mana to kill like a three drop or something, but uh, there seem to be like a lot of three toughness four four mana cards as well, and then that's and that's a little bit better than that. And then again, if you hit two or more, it's pretty good. I think I'm gonna go with the B on this one. Um, I I would not be surprised if it's like an A, but I would be surprised if it's anything better than an A though. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised at all if it's a B either. It really depends on the creature types of the limited playable creature specifically, right? Because we're going yep. card by card, but in reality, you know, there's the commons that show up a lot more than on commons and rares. And then there's the ones that you always want to put in your deck. And then what creature type did those have? You know what I mean? Like if, if, if four of the six playable blue common creatures are the same type, then this yep. card is a lot better than if they're all six of the playable blue common creatures are different types, right? So, sure. I mean, I, sure. it's, it is it is hard to evaluate mm -hmm. without actually checking the creature type of everything, but I wouldn't be shocked if it was a B or like a C plus. I wouldn't be shocked if it was an A, A plus. It really depends on the creature types of the common playable creatures. Yeah, I, I, I definitely agree. Somewhere between C and A. Uh, I don't think it's going to be an S. I don't think it's going to be a D. So somewhere between that, but uh, that's pretty cool. So, all right. So that's going to be all of the black cards. Um, well, uh, I believe that we're going to save the rest for tomorrow. It, does the same time work for you, Ben, tomorrow? Um, yeah. I, Probably. I, so I have to check. I'm pretty bad about okay. remembering my plans. I know I have a thing or two tomorrow, but I, I, I think I'm free tomorrow night. Probably can do 9 p.m. Eastern. Um, if not, I'll let you know as soon as possible, and we can uh, okay. let people know that it'll be at a little bit different time. Yeah, guys. So make sure you're following uh, our Twitters because we'll because we'll, we'll be tweeting that out whatever whenever that's going to be happening tomorrow. Um, yeah, and I guess I, I guess last thing is uh, anything that stood out stood out to you from the cards that we've seen so far. We've seen a lot of cards with adventures, a lot of cards with um, with I mean, uh, like. It's hard I don't know, to night synergies and stuff. Yeah, it's hard to evaluate this set because I feel like this is going to be a, a, a very synergy oriented set. So, I mean, you know, like I said a couple times, take these ratings with a grain of salt, take them to the pre release, but discard them. Don't think like, oh, those guys are the pros. Like, they said this. Like, we, I don't even know what all the cards in the set are. Like, I don't even read previews <laughs> much. Like, I, I'm literally seeing a lot of these cards for the first time. So, you know, I just, I, I want people to understand, like, you know, the reason I usually don't do this is because some of these are going to be wildly wrong. I don't like getting anchored to early impressions. Yep. I'll, the set looks sweet. It looks synergy oriented. <laughs> you know, take what we're saying as a guide for the pre-release. But if you feel like we're wrong, you're probably right. You know what I mean? And we probably yeah. will be saying, oh, we were wrong about this. We were wrong about that. You know what I'm saying? Other than that. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean, for some context. Even the tier lists that you guys use from uh, my content is that, well, oftentimes within the first month, like e even even as long as the first month, I'm still changing card evaluation stuff, you know? And also in limited, um, you'd be surprised to hear if you don't play much limited, but metas change as well because people start to believe that different things are better. People start to think that certain things are worse. So um, people start playing different things and the metas can shift as well. So uh yeah like just try just try new things if you think that a card's bad well just try it out yourself to see exactly how bad it is i think that's something and, uh, that i really believe in other than that i just wanted to say like you know uh let me know in my discord uh let me know what you thought about this stream if this is something you enjoyed or didn't like if you would have preferred that i just drafted tonight let's say or if you prefer one of these every time a new set comes out over like me just drafting the like m20 or whatever uh, you know, I always appreciate the feedback. Uh, you know, I really enjoy limited and all aspects of it. So, you know, I'm happy to do stuff like this. I'm happy to just spend this night drafting instead. So definitely, you know, get at me with that feedback and let me know what you thought of this. I always enjoy working with Detsy. I hope you enjoyed, uh, you know, I hope you enjoy the stream. I, you know, I love the interaction. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. And honestly, like the last time we did something together was a draft for a uh, YouTube. And I've been looking forward to doing something together again. And uh, I guess let us know if how interested y'all are in uh, for a Benzie podcast as well. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so we'll, we'll, so we'll finish this uh, tomorrow or Sunday. We'll update y'all with the times as soon as possible. Yep. 
Uh, thanks, everybody, for tuning in tonight. And uh, we'll continue this on uh, during the weekend. All right. See you, see you later, guys, from Ben's stream. Uh, I will be just drafting, probably streaming for another, like, two or three hours or something. Do, do some drafts or something. So see you later, guys. And Ben, again, thanks for uh, joining me on this. Hey, it's thank, really fun. thank you for inviting me and setting it up. I mean, you did all the real work here. So, you know, th thank you for putting this together. Sounds good. All right. See you soon, Ben. Let me know. Bye.